Hey there, audiobook enthusiasts. Welcome to the audiobook collection. Today's upcoming audiobook is a special shout out to one of our amazing Patreon backers. If you're keen on personalized requests, consider becoming a part of our Patreon community. The link is in the video description below. Your support is truly appreciated, and I'm grateful to have you with me on this exciting audiobook adventure. And hey, if you're looking for a bundle of 300 plus novels, swing by my Kofi shop. For just $35, you can snag a Google Drive link to an audiobook treasure trove. Additionally, if you want to show some love to the original author of this novel, check out the author's credits discreetly provided in the description. Your support makes a difference. Thanks for being part of this literary journey with me. Chapter 51 Good Old Totsuki The Autumn Elections it's an event where Totsuki's most elite and talented students are picked by the elite ten themselves battle each other in an intense and heated battle. There is no room for weakness, no room for mistakes. And the 43rd autumn election is no exception. Its participants were chosen carefully and with the utmost care making sure that only the strong can step foot into the big stage. Alexander and co walked inside the huge building where the autumn election will be held. Inside the building is a large number of students waiting in the open arena with the other students in the spectacle seats. Alexander could swear that the whole school is here watching now. These people are supposed to be the strongest of the first years, huh? Alice said with a subtle mocking tone. I hope so. Takumi stretched his arms as he scanned the area. Looks like your brother is here too. Akira pointed with his chin at Soma getting Alexander's attention. Good Alexander smiled at his brother who waved at him from a far place. I have to say, he is a strange one at era recalled the day Soma visited June's place for some lectures about spices once the theme for the election was decided. Tell me something I don't know, he is just like our father Alexander could swear that Soma and his father are a copy of each other, it's a constant battle for who is the weirdest between the two of them. Soma ran to his brother with his friends, Megumi, Yuki, and Ryoko. Aniki, it's been long since the last time I saw you, Soma said as he punched Alexander lightly. The last time he saw his brother was when they were playing bing bong in their dorm before Alexander left suddenly without saying anything. Hello, everyone he greeted his brother's friends too and so did Megumi and Ko. But when his eyes landed on Isami, he got confused is this guy a new resident in your dormitory, brother? He asked with his head tilted. I've never seen him before anywhere, said Ryoko. Yeah, and he is quite handsome, so I am pretty sure if someone like this was in our school I'd know about him said Yuki with her hand on her chin trying to recall where has she seen Isami. What are you talking about? This is my brother, Isami said to Kimi. Everyone took a moment to process his words out are you kidding me? They shouted, their picture of Isami is the large dude who is always walking behind his brother, but this dude is on another level. Alexander and the others nodded in agreement with them, they had the same reaction when Isami came down one morning for the breakfast, they almost throw him out of the dorm thinking he was an intruder who walked in without permission. As the boys and girls were talking about Isami's transformation, the lights turned off and everyone shut up from the sudden event. We'd like to thank all of our attendees for waiting, please pay attention to the stage in the front, we'll have some opening words from the director himself, an announcer said in the mic as all students looked at the front stage with nervousness. This is Totsuki. Until now, not a single good thing came when they were listening to some opening speeches. Senzimon, the director of Tatsuki walked to the big stage with his grey yukatu and wooden sandals, his face is unmoving with no clear emotions on it. He sent a little bit of fear to the students just by walking and being present. He stood at the stage and inhaled deeply until he choked causing a series of coughing. Alice faced herself Grandpa, what are you doing? Alexander and Hyama chuckled at that. When I breathe in this place's atmosphere, I can feel my hair and body being surrounded by vitality. This venue is known as the Chandra's Room. It is only used for the shock hoshis between the Elite Ten. Senzimon's words sent shock through all the students, making them realize how important this place is. Anything related to the Elite Ten is very important and to battle in the same place they use is a great honor. To honor all of the people who have been in the position of the first seat, it's our tradition to hang their portrait here. He pointed at the wall ledge where a series of portraits set hanged of all the first elite ten seat holders. Alexander looked up to see some of the people he recognizes. His mother Alexandra is there too, her portrait is hanged a little bit before that of Dujima. He also saw Shinomiya's too, Soma was surprised at that, he had never witnessed anything like that. Oh! It's that women from the last week with my father, Soma pointed at the portrait of Alexander's mother. Huh? You don't know who she is? 
asked Alexander, he looked at his brother with confusion, doesn't he know that Alexandra is Joycro's first wife? Nah, she was with my father when he came to visit, but I didn't get the time to introduce myself probably. Soma shrugged, everyone in the room looked at him and then looked at Alexander, they know who Alexandru is but it is not their business to speak in. Alexander decided no to tell him anyway, if his mother didn't introduce herself to him probably, then he shouldn't get in her business anyways. Many matches and many specialties were born here, Senzaman continued as he brought the students back from their sightseeing, they linger here like sediment. The continues memories of the battle that were held here, and the autumn elections main tournament will be held here too. Senzaman's voice started to get louder, deeper and more joyful, the more he spoke about this place, the more excited he became too, and the students shared the same feeling too. Ladies and gentlemen, you will make history here, he shouted as hard as he can getting the students' adrenaline pumping up like crazy as the grinned wide and clear, cooks of Tatsuki's 92nd generation? Let us meet again in this place, following his voice, all of the first years gave an ear-piercing shout in response to the director's speech. Senzimon then left the stage, letting the students enjoy their moment of feeling the power in themselves. After he left the stage, another announcement came, we will now announce the rules of the preliminaries. The basic regulations are as written in the letter sent to you, the theme is curry dish. You may use the ingredients in this venue or the ones you brought with you, the time limit is 3 hours, and regarding the number the passing students, out of the 60 participants, the number of students that will advance to the main tournaments is a total of 8. These few words sent shivers down the spines of every student there. As they have expected, things aren't getting any easier. 8? Impossible, but why did they even bother choosing 60 participants? Again. So cruel. Many reactions erupted between the students. From fear, excitement, nervousness, and anxiety. We ask all participants promptly proceed to either Hall A or B at this time, in about an hour from now, at 11 o'clock, the preliminaries will start. All students didn't waste any time, although they were scarred, they are still the best of the first year in this generation. Each student ran to his designated hall. Well then, let us go to Alexander looked at his friends who were still calm and quiet about the whole thing, unlike everyone, these guys are the most confident in their skills, they know they can face any challenge that comes their way. Make sure you pass this round, I hope to meet someone from our dorm in the finals Alexander smiled at them which they returned. You bet. It will be me who you'll be facing, Takumi proclaimed proudly, each day he is growing, each day he is learning new stuff, either from Alexander, Kiyama, Alice, Ryo, Isami, or even his own mistakes, he won't stop growing, not until he defeats Alexander. Alexander was happy to hear that, he looked at the other and with no words, he could understand that they were determined to reach the top with their full power. Then, let us meet first in the main tournament. Alexander turned to leave to his hall. The rest followed him as they were separated into two halls. Alexander breathed in a deep breath. This intense feeling, this excitement, this atmosphere, it's just good old Totsuki. He thought. Chapter 52, none other than him. Ori Sendawara, one of the twin sisters nicknamed as the Queens of Curry. She made her way toward Hall B where one half of the participants in this year's autumn election is gathering waiting for the signal to begin. Such a grand event for a bunch of kids. Ishiki who was walking with her smiled at that. I wouldn't say they are kids as every last one of them is capable of working in the four-star hotel. Ishiki praised his juniors without holding back. Ori just ignored him and sat on her chair. The two judges who were already waiting for her smiled and said, Would you like to announce the start of the tournament? They handed by the mick and she took it casually. All right everybody, make the best curry dish you could make, and make sure you don't embarrass yourselves, with an arrogant and smug face she announced the beginning of the battles. While doing so, she ran her eyes across the participants judging them. The students didn't take long to start making their dish, each student had his own idea, many tools were brought out. Takumi took out pasta dough, he made the spectators confused at his actions. Why is he using a pasta dough? Isn't it a bit yellowish? Maybe he needed it with turmeric or something? A heated discussion is raising up about each student's ingredients they pull out. Isami managed to stir up the students to talk about him as he filled the bottom of the pot with tomatoes. Ori sniffed the air as a heavy aroma hit her nose, she shivered from it and looked at the person responsible for it. It was Yuki. So that what it is, a wild game curry a few students managed to impress Ori so she can give them a look. Ishiki was happy to hear her praise his fellow dorm mate. While this was going on. Alice managed to grab the attention with her scientific tools, she brought with her an instant freezer and centrifuge. 
while Hisako got the attention she deserves by her quick movement and her familiarity with her tools. She poured the spices she mixed into the water. Alice and Hisako looked tar each other with a little hatred, mainly from Hisako. How dare you hurt Erina Sama's feeling? Hisako is still angry as she remembers how her master is in pain knowing that the man she loves is with another woman. Don't look at me like that, everything goes. Erina isn't the only one who is feeling bad knowing the man she loves is with another woman. Alice is still feeling bad knowing that she is sharing Alexander now and she got no choice in the matter, not her, not Alexander. The only thing that makes her bear it is that she is officially engaged to Alexander before anyone else. Ori who observed the kids turned around to flirt with Ishiki. Now that we are done here, Ishiki-chan, won't you be my possession already? Her melodic and seductive voice made her fellow judges feel like their heart is about to burst, but Ishiki remained calm and acted professionally. How mean stop teasing me and be mine already she pushed up her assets to show Ishiki what he will be missing. In the middle of her picking up Ishiki, a faint and stealthily smell made its way across the hall making everyone feel a shiver of pleasure going down their spine. What is this smell? So good. God, who is making this heavenly aroma? Many students exclaimed as they enjoyed the pleasant aroma. It didn't take long to reach the judges area. Ori, Ishiki, and the other judges felt like they were up in the cloud but there a sea of fire under them. Feeling both of the pleasure and danger. Ori closed her eyes and leaked a slight moan mmm. This smell, where have I smelled something like this before? She opened her eyes to look for who is responsible for such an event. Her eyes followed her strong sense of smell, it went beyond, Takumi, Hisako, Alice, and Isami. Back at the last station inside this hall, one chef with a black t-shirt under his white chef uniform. His reddish black hair swayed following the motions of the air. His golden eyes glowed under the heavy illuminated area. Or his eyes went wide open as she saw him Al, Alexa, and Asama. She could not believe her eyes, she closed her eyes and opened them thinking she was hallucinating. Alexander Sama Ori shouted as her eyes turned into the shape of a heart, she jumped from her chair and went to head to Alexander's place but she was stopped by the other judges and Ishiki. Lady Ori, please stop, it's prohibited for a judge to walk inside the cooking area, one judge said. Please, restrain yourself. Ishiki put his hand on her shoulder and with a charming smile he said please wait until he wants to serve his dish, then you can meet him face to face. Ori bites on her thumbnail, as she thought about all the time she wasted looking for him in Russia, just for him to be in Japan all this time. Fine. Ori sat down and played with her golden hair waiting for Alexander to come and present his dish. She can't wait already by the heavenly aroma he is releasing. Her eyes are glued on him like he is the only thing in this universe. Oh. My sister. I must inform her about this she took out her phone and messaged her sister. Her twin sister in the other hall received her message and wanted to run to be hall just so she can get a glimpse of Alexander. But she was stopped by Zen and the other judges as Ryo was the first student to serve his dish, so they can't have her out just yet. Back in hall B, the first to finish his dish is a student named Kamiya Watari. He served his new chicken curry dish to the judges. Now everyone, the first contestant will be serving his dish, I wonder what the judges have to say about this? A cute girl stood behind the serving student as his dish was being tasted. Great, the flavor is strong and the chicken slices aren't hard to chew on. It is really a great dish Ozaji Kita, one of the judges praised Akimi's dish. It is as Sir Dot Ozaji said, it is good, Judge Shinjo added too. It is my honor to hear such words, having heard words that please his ear, Takumi was sure his score won't be anything fair from the top. As the score was announced on the big screen, Takumi, the MC girl, and even the audience were shocked. He only got 24 scores, Takumi Jaw was on the floor as he couldn't believe they're what he is seeing now. Only 24. Dot. How can this be? Are you sure you didn't make a mistake? Takumi said to the judges. Honorable judges, the maximum score each of you can give is 20, the MC girl reminded the judges. We are aware of this. Mr. Dot Ozaji said to the MC before his eyes shifted to Takumi Boy, we are not looking for good chefs here. Anything less than phenomenal is bound to be crushed under the floor. His voice was cruel to the ear as he ripped through Takumi's pride. The poor boy felt like he has just hit to all that he will never pass his entire life. He trembled and his legs went weak. He fell on his knees and re-signed to his fate. The first victim was just crushed in front of their eyes. This made the students spend more efforts on their dishes so they won't end up like them. The next contestants to serve are Arato Hisako and Seidatsuka now. Both of the girls seemed like they have some kind of hatred. Now was first, 
Her fish was simply creepy. It was a dark curry dish with noodles, it even made Dory shudder at the sight of it. But against all predictions, the dish was anything but bad. Ori and the other four judges felt like they were slaves to the flavor making the audience feel awe and shocked. The score was announced and now got 84 points. Now, try to beat that, mess very annoying secretary. Now looked at Arito as she laughed creepily. Humphrey, you savage women, it seems you still have not learned your lesson. Let me show you the difference in our abilities. Arito presented her dish. Ori was the first to take a taste. Immediately she felt like she went deep down the ocean and swam with the fishes. Arito's dish was a curry dish with seafood. Her score was 92 points. The highest so far. Next was Yuki from the Polar Star. Her dish was not anything far from the highest scoring dish. Her dish was a hybrid between curry, rice, and pineapple. Although she got fewer points from Ori due to her strict judgment, the other judges still gave her night points. Her final score is 86. The next person was Hujimoko. Her Chinese curry dish gained the judges pleasure and satisfaction, giving her a score of 87 taking second place after Arato. Next was Isami, his calzone wrapped curry was a shock to everyone. The judges tasted the dish and they were assaulted with the taste of tomatoes that Isami put in the bottom earlier. But the surprise is that his curry only uses tomatoes water and no other form of water. His final score was 87, gaining the third place from Yuki. Isami looked at his brother and smiled I gave it my everything, Nichan. So make sure you don't lose. I don't you to cry here. That was when we're kids, Takumi shouted as he almost dropped his dish forget about it already. No, it is a good memory to keep Isami smiled as he went back to his station and wait for the contest to be over. Takumi Aldini served his dish bon appetite. Ori observed his dish mushroom, bacon, pepper, the pasta's shape is similar to fettuccine. She took her fork and rolled some on it, as soon as the fork entered her mouth she felt like a storm was inside her mouth, as she swallowed the food down, the storm followed. Ori felt like she was standing between a line that cuts between Italy and Japan, both flavors of the two cuisines. But most importantly, in her mind, she saw a samurai Takumi cutting through an invisible barrier that held back many chefs in the world. He had finally reached another level, Takumi Aldini is a new man with new ambitions. As the judges were savoring the flavor of his dish, Takumi looked back at his brother who had already realized the result beforehand. He smiled at his brother and shifted his eyes to Alexander. Alexander, look here, look at me. Every fight I lost, every advice you gave me, all of them are right here in this one dish. The score was announced and the hall was silent for a moment. Takumi Aldini 96 points. Woo! -woo. Impossible. How can that be? Many students were on the verge of breaking their skulls, they had already thought that Arato was the first place, her being Arena's aide didn't let them doubt her at all. But to surpass her with four points is something phenomenal. Throughout the history of the autumn election, only one person was able to crack through the 95 point mark to higher scores. Crazy, Takumi. Next is Alice. I hope you don't mind me serving before you babe. Alice held a curry dish as she spoke to Alexander. Nah, just go ahead, I am still not done yet, said Alexander as he put the final touches on his dish. Next contestant is, before the MC can finish her words, Alice was already at the judge's table. Here, I worked hard on this one, please try some Alice smiles as she presented her curry dish, I guess. Takumi walked to her and saw her dish, he frowned where is the curry part in this, he asked. The judges were already shocked. You see... The mousse was made by mixing frozen crushed foie with turmeric and the white part in the center is a mix between six different cheese potato puree. I use the quick freezer to make it melt as soon as it is inside the mouth while Alice is explaining, Ori is feeling like she knows every single detail about the dish as it goes down her throat. She leaked a pleasant voice as an electric shock spread through her body. And I used an animation tool to make that crescent shape. Alice is still explaining her dish to Takumi who getting his brain roasted from all the information he is getting. There you go again with all of this science stuff, just cook like everyone else, will ya? Takumi felt that this is too much to be called a dish, it's already like a lab dish than a cooked fish. The score was up and it was 95 points. TSK, I am behind Italian Kun, how unpleasant. What? Does it hurt to lose? Ha 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 Takumi started laughing as hard as he can to get in Alice's nerves, and it worked as they started fighting. Again. Next is, Contesta Tadokura Megumi. It was Megumi's turn, she looked at the scoreboard and her heart felt like it was at the deepest part of the ocean. The scores were so high, 
If she wanted to be in the next round, she needs to get that 90 points. Ishiki smiled at her and said with an assuring tone it's okay Tadokura-kun, you have grown since the training camp, you can do it. Hearing her senpai's voice, Megumi steeled her will and presented her dish. This is my goose fish dobujiru curry. I worked very hard on it, please don't hesitate. The judges took a bite and they felt so warm and cozy as if they are inside their own home surrounded by their family members and loved ones. Ori saw her sister peeling oranges for her as she fed her. This feels like I want to go home. Ori smiled and closed her eyes to savor the taste of home as much as she can. The judges didn't have any difference in their reactions as they all longed for their homes. Tears went down Nori's cheek. The score was up, Tadokura Megumi 91 points. She was in fourth place after Hisako. The audience went wild, Megumi was competing with the top at this moment, her score is way up high as she cracked the 90 points wall. Tadokura fell down to the floor as she breathed a sigh of relief. As everyone was discussing how surprising this turn of events was, a faint sound of footsteps was heard in the arena. Megumi looked behind her and Alexander looked down at her with a sad smile. I sorry. His voice held petty for Megumi as she was quick to pick that up. She suddenly remembered who this is, who was the person who managed to stand up against an alumni, who managed to finish an impossible training camp task with one hand, who cooked a breakfast buffet with one arm and still finished second. Megumi's heart clenched very hard as she answered these questions yes, it was none other than him. Chapter 53, Shock, Just Shock At one of the remote but not abandoned buildings of Totsuki, inside a certain room, a series of sighs were unleashed every now and then. The person responsible for such a thing is the Red Princess of Totsuki herself, Kobayashi Rindo. While she was deep in her thoughts, other people around her felt uncomfortable, seeing Rindo like this is something impossible as she would be jumping around Totsuki looking for something new and unique. Um, Rindo dot dot is dot dot is everything alright? One of the two boys with Rindo spoke to her. His hair is wild with his silver eyes that can look into anyone's soul. His tie is hanged loose on his shoulder. Did she hit her head on something or what? Kuga said as he gave his report to the first seat. Be quiet cat head, I am thinking about a serious matter here Rindo looked at Kuga with irritation making the two elite ten members feel that Rindo is surely not herself today. The last person to think about something seriously is Rindo. This made her friend Tsukasa feel that there must be something wrong, he and Kuga exchanged a look before he asked what is the matter, Rindo? Is it dangerous? Yes, very dangerous Rindo looked at her friend with her golden cat A's as Kuga somehow tensed up feeling the dangerous tone Rindo was speaking with. The two boys waited for Rindo to continue with everything focused on her. Kuga, Tsukasa, she called. What is it? They asked. Dot am I a fun person to be with? Suddenly Rindo's serious mode disappeared and was replaced with her usual happy-go-lucky mode. Kuga looked at her with anger but decided to shut up, he clenched his teeth enduring the frustration. He knows better than anyone how Rindo can be annoying at times if she put her mind to it. Tsukasa sighed in relief as he returned to his meekly mode again don't scare me like that Rindo, he said. What are you talking about, Tsukasa? This is very serious, now answer me. Rindo caught Tsukasa collar and shook his body back and forth. Ah dot dot Rindo, please stop. Tsukasa started feeling dizzy from the continuous shaking. Letting go of Tsukasa, Rindo eyed Kuga like a predator, feeling her star. Kuga tensed and protected himself as she jumped on his body dropping him on the floor like a pro wrestler. Answer me Kuga, your cute senpai is begging you, said Rindo with a cute voice. Kuga hit the floor in submission feeling his arms going numb let go of me you savage. But Rindo paid him no mind. Kuga thought of a solution to this situation, but all that comes to his mind is the preliminaries of the autumn election that are going on. Suddenly Kuga had an idea did you hear the news? They say there is someone really strong in this year's autumn election participants. He throws the news at Rindo even though he himself did not check it out, but everything is fine as long as Rindo let go of his arms. Really? And it worked. Rindo let go of Kuga as she stood up, she helped him up with her eyes shining who is he? Which hall is he in? She asked wanting to storm right away, the preliminaries are still halfway through if she left now she may be able to catch him in action. Kuga sweat dripped as he doesn't know if the rumors are true or not. Tsukasa tried to remember if he had heard such news before. If I am not wrong, I heard Izan say something about a boy who served 201 meals in the breakfast buffet assignment in the training camp, it may be him said Tsukasa, this piece of news made Rindo feel very excited. One arm? So cool. 
she thought. Who is he? she asked again. Tsukasa smiled as he tries to remember the name as he went through the names of the participants as it will help him remember his name I is, Sabu Alexander, he is in Hall B, said Tsukasa as he looked at one paper in front of him. If you left now you w before he can finish, Rindo grabbed him by his arm and took off, not forgetting Kuga too. Rindo dragged the first and eighth seat of the Elite Ten to the autumn election preliminaries halls. She can't wait to see this person. Her mind was in chaos lately because of her fiancé's words. From that night on, she wasn't in the mood to do anything. This may help her feel refreshed. Running straight to Hall B, Rindo passed the building's gate. Hearing no sound at all, Rindo went sad in the hallway. She thought it must have ended a long time ago if there is no noise from the audience. The autumn election brings every first year in the school to watch. Obligatory. The only reason for this quietness must be because everyone must have left. Seeing his friend down, Tsukasa patted her shoulder. But suddenly Rindo's ears twitched. Do you hear that? She asked. Kuga and Tsukasa listened closely but did not hear anything. I don't H before Kuga can say anything. An ear-piercing crowd shouting came from the hallway. It's not over yet. Rindo ran forward followed by Kuga and Tsukasa. They entered the audience area and they were right. It wasn't over yet. What happened? Is it something interesting? Rindo looked around her as she saw everyone talking in between each other with frightened eyes. Rindo became confused as she looked back at Kuga and Tsukasa who were looking up with shocked faces making Rindo even more confused. Following their line of sight, Rindo looked up, specifically at the screen board. When she saw what was on it, she too, for the first time in her life felt at loss of words. What was on the board is the following. Sabu Alexander, 100 points. Takumi Aldini, 96 points. Naki Realis, 95 points. Aruto Hisako, 92 points. Chapter 54, 100 points. Throughout the history of Totsuki, in all of the previous autumn elections, no one was able to break through the 98 mark. Only one person managed to achieve such a feat. It was the godmother herself, with 99 points. But even she struggled to reach that level. If someone shouted he will get full mark in the preliminaries of the autumn election, he will be dubbed as a naive kid who doesn't know how hard it is, even the judges will feel petty for him as they will crush his dream. And those same judges are now at their table with lights shining on them, crying from the emotional impact they had received. No one said anything bad to them, no one touched them. But they ate something, something that pulled up the most treasured memory they have. Ori, one of the twin curry queen, was on her phone. No mum, nothing happened to me. I just wanted to hear your voice, yes, my sister is okay. Two tears are streaming down on her cheeks while she uses a napkin to wipe them out. Another judge, Ozaji, he pulled out a picture of his deceased daughter and started crying in silent. He touched the picture gently. His red eyes and tears didn't shadow his genuine smile. He recalled the first time she was born and how happy she was. The other three judges, each one had the thing they treasured in their memory in front of them very clear. All of their ambitions were put aside for a moment before they realized for what they have been doing this all the time. Some did it for their family, some wanted their kids yo idolize them and be proud. All in all, they remembered. Excuse me, the MC girl called for the judges. The hall was very silent as the audience were very confused. No one knows what happened to the judges. One moment they were eating and the other they were crying. The judges looked at the MC girl with a little bit of anger scaring her. I. I am really sorry to disturb you, but you must give us the result, contestant Alexander and his fellow students are eager to know the results, she pointed Alexandra who had Alice and Takumi standing beside him waiting with eagerness for the results although they have a really bad feeling about this. Fine. Ori looked at Alexander and smiled Alexander Sama, you did a splendid job with this coconut curry dish. She hit two buttons in front of her congratulations. No sooner, the screen board showed the result, if the hall was quite earlier then now it must be nothing short of dead silent. They can't be blamed, everyone looked up and dropped their jaws. You gotta be kidding me, said Takumi. This is way too much of flexing, babe Alice smiled awkwardly, she knows that her fiancé is very talented and can stand his ground against Alexandra, but this, this is what she had never imagined. Sabu Alexander, 100 points. Alexand relaxed a little as he looked at Takumi. Takumi noticed him staring and looked back at him. How about that? He extended both of his hands at the screen. A tick mark appeared on Takumi's forehead as he exploded. What the hell are you being proud for? This is not over yet. Do you hear me? 
his finger was on Alexander's cheek pressing hard on him. Whatever Alexander played it cool and looked the other way with a smug expression. Alice smiled as she looked to the screen board with this, three of the North Star are taking the top spots. Hell yeah, Takumi quickly shifted his behavior to celebrating. Congratulations, everyone. Isami came to his brother with a smile looks like I still got a long way to go, he said. Do your best Isami Takumi didn't forget to encourage his brother a little. On the other side, Megumi was looking down, tears are falling on her cheeks while her body is trembling. I lost. Again she closed her eyes as she couldn't bear to look up at her friends and her hometown people who are watching. Megumi. Megumi. Several shouting came from the audience. Megumi dormates are waving a flag that had a chibi Megumi in it. Don't be down. You did your best. The two boys from the Polar Star are crying as they try to make their friend feel better. They if all people know what she been through. Fumio looked at Megumi and the two idiots shouting at her. Her eyes couldn't help but let tears go down. She clenched her hands and then took a long deep breath Megumi. She shouted getting Megumi attention. You are of the Polar Star's residence, don't cry. With her shaky voice, Fumio managed to say what she wanted. For her, these words are enough. No matter what happened, Tadokura was still worthy enough to stay in the Pilar Star, meaning she has the potential to raise up the ranks. As soon as Fumio stopped shouting, the crowd erupted with screams. A miracle happened, and they were one of the few people to witness this live. Heated discussions begin spreading between the students. This is unheard of. Some were doubting their eyes while others are trying to figure out how that dish is made. They witnessed the whole process and they were sure it was just the normal coconut curry dish. This unbelievable. At Alexander and Go. Alice, who heard Megumi friends shouting her name, felt her heart clenching as she started crying too this is so touching. Why are you crying too? said Takumi with a surprised expression. Shut up you heartless monster. What did you call me? You monster. The two didn't take long to start fighting making Alexander feel a terrible headache. It must be hard, Isami said with a smile. You have no idea, said Alexander. On the other side, at the audience area. Three people were looking down at the person who made a whole stadium go crazy. This guy is some big trouble, said Kuga. Tsukasa smiled as his blood started pumping very hard. His long dormant competitive personality started to resurface again he is not half bad, don't you think so too, Rindo? Tsukasa said to Rindo but he never got an answer. Rindo. He looked at her and saw her eyes glued on Alexander. Do you perhaps know him? he asked. Kuga picked that up and listened closely. Yeah. She smiled with a big grin, her cat eyes glowed as she eyes Alexander like a delicious meal he is my fiancé. Tsukasa and Kuga froze as Rindo passed by them and left the arena. This is going to be fun. Rindo left those words before she disappeared in the dark hallway again leaving her friends looking at Alexander with shocked A's. Chapter 55, Cheers. Please forgive my mistakes, they are not intentional. At the Elite Ten Council meeting room, Nakari Arena, Etsuya Rizan, Nen Kanokyani, Samai Saito are sitting in their respective seat in the meeting room. Four, although I had asked for a meeting, only four showed up. Don't they understand that the main tournament is just a few days away? Arena tapped on the table with her finger, she was pretty annoyed at how her senpais carry no sense of priorities at all. There is still enough time Nakari san. Nen, the twin pigtails green haired girl spoke as she adjusted her glasses besides, all we need to do for the main tournament is choosing the theme. That would only require a short 15 minutes meeting. No need for the rush she said. Even so. I don't think we should rush things Nakari san the samurai looking guy with the undercut spoke as he stood up. Saito senpai. Arena called for the leaving senpai. Her purpose is to get things done very quickly so she can free her schedule. If things went like this, she will be busy for the whole next week. At this rate, she won't be able to meet him, she won't be able to congratulate him. Nen stood up too and looked at Harina until the next meeting. She turned to leave leaving only Arena and Izan alone. God. How can they do this? Arena cursed her luck for having such irresponsible senpais. Arena looked at Izan who was in deep thoughts while looking at the preliminaries results, things went further than he expected. He looked up and his eyes met with Arena's. Nakari. He called. What is Izan Senpai? How much do you know about Sabu Alexander? asked Izan. He had seen Nakari Alice around him, so he was hoping that Harina does know something. Alexander Sama, 
Erina wondered about why would Izan ask such question but she didn't think about it for long and continued all I know is that he descends from a prestigious family with a long history in the business and political world, the Helmet family and he is the young family head currently after his uncle proved to be unworthy of such responsibility. As soon as Izan heard the name Helmet he felt like he did hear that name before. He stood up and left the meeting room too until the next meeting, Nakari. Erina soon left the room, she met Taruto outside waiting for her Erina Sama. She called. What are you doing here, shouldn't you be in your kitchen practicing as I mentioned? My duties as Erina Sama's secretary are far more important, said Erota with total devotion. Erina sighed and smiled your opponents this time are far stronger than you think, especially the ones who were in your group the two girls walked towards the exist as Erina was giving a piece of advice to her secretary. Aruto recalled the three monsters in her group, Alice, Takumi, and Alexander. She has some confidence about defeating anyone in the main tournament, but the two who had the highest score this time around made her feel a little uncomfortable. Takumi and Alexander's result were phenomenal this time around, no one had expected this kind of result at all. Speaking of Takumi and Alexander, the two are celebrating their achievement with their fellow friends. Everyone, let us congratulate each other, Takumi, Alice, Kiyama, Ryo, Isami, and Alexander. You all did a great job and proved yourselves. Cheers. Natasha raised her beer cup up with her shaking and happy voice. Her eyes are shining with happiness. Cheers everyone followed behind her and raised their drinks up as they shouted happily. Most of the North Star residents managed to move to the main tournament making Natasha feel very happy. Seeing the old Natasha happy made them happy too. Although not everyone was happy, Kiyama was feeling very bad. He can't believe that his score is the fourth. Alexander has 100, Takumi 96 and Alice has 95 points. This is too much for him to handle, his specialty field is spices, he was damn sure he will be the one to prevail on the top of the preliminaries. But it seems not. It seems he has overestimated his abilities. Takumi came to Hyama, and put his arm on his shoulder don't be sad Hyama kun we will meet each other in the preliminary soon ha ha ha. Takumi was having the best moment in his life, although he didn't manage to beat Alexander again, he still got the second spot, and he broke a record too. This further proves that he is growing, all the battles he lost against Alexander honed his skills and spirit even more than he expected. He was right in choosing Alexander as his rival. Shut up, I don't need you to cheer me up. Kiyama slapped the smug Takumi's hand away from him but Takumi still laughed. Isami came to rescue Kiyama from his brother's happy mood. He seems very happy. Alice spoke to Alexander who was drinking his cold apple juice, he raised his eyebrow and nodded. Natasha watched her little children play around with a smile as she compared this scene with one of her past memories. By the way Alexander, what did you make to earn all of these points? Yo popped out of nowhere beside Alexander. Immediately, Takumi, Alice, and Hyama zoomed at Alexander's place. That's right, said Hyama with an intense look spell what you have right now. I second that too, said Takumi while Alice nodded exaggeratedly. It was just a normal coconut curry dish, you guys never made one of those? he asked. Don't try to fool us, no way in the seven heavens will a normal coconut curry dish earn 100 scores in the autumn election, said Alice, she poked Alexander in the cheek while everyone threatened him with a murderous look. Alexander sighed and put his glass down it's all about your way of cooking and belief, said Alexander, his words weren't clear as the guys tilted their heads in confusion making Alexander face palm himself. Everyone has their unique style of cooking while some have the same. They differ in the level of their mastery of that way. Your way of cooking is your identity as a chef, it gives the dish a mysterious flavor that no other chef can give. He stood up and dramatically spread his arms and your belief is that you believe in your dish, you believe that your dish is the best and it can reach the desired goal you want, you make the dish believing it will make the judges feel like everything else is trash and only your dish is regarded as true me. Alice, Takumi, Ryo, and Hyama looked at Alexander with wide eyes. What a show off, said Takumi. Go flex on someone else, said Alice. Don't go around giving speeches just because you got 100 points. It doesn't matter if you are not the last man standing in the main tournament said Yama, be prepared, said Yo with a monotone voice. Alexander rolled his eyes as he felt like he just poured water in the sand. By the way everyone, did you forget something? called Alexander. I don't think so, said Yama with irritation, his low score is still bothering him. Alexander opened his uniform and pulled out a small box, he opened it slowly and showed everyone what is inside. Everyone's eyes widened. 
the North Star's ultimate UNO championship, said Alexander, he made a serious expression that he didn't make even when he was cooking in the preliminaries, he wasn't alone, everyone else did the same. Ah yes, it was today, said Hyama with a deep voice. How pathetic. It will be my win this time Alice looked at Isami who had his usual smile but it was coated with a little of mockery inside it. Humphrey dot dot today will mark my first twin Alexander and the rest gathered around a table as the cards were shuffled and passed around. Natasha witnessed this sudden turn of events as she burst out laughing while thinking they are the same, they are really the same. Totsuki is a school with competitive people who grind to be the best cooks in the world. But inside the North Star, cooking is not everything. The autumn election main tournament is near. Now, who will face who? Will the North Star friends face each other? But most importantly, who will be the strongest student of all of the first years? Chapter 56, Scared while the winners in the preliminaries were celebrating their victory, Alexander and co were battling each other in Uno, they had some fun trough the night. The next day, they were dead asleep from being tired all night. None of them could move a finger, only the old Natasha woke up to clean the dormitory. At another location, the port, it was very early in the morning. Morning mist is creeping around every corner of the port, from the warehouses to the dock giant ships. In one particular area, a group of black-suited men were looking at the biggest ship in this port. One of the men who seemed like their leader spoke out first so you're telling me that a bunch of Japanese Yakuza, stormed in the ship took out our equipment and left without anyone noticing? The man had a black spiky hair with an undercut. His golden eyes glowed in the morning mist giving him a dangerous vibe. This man is none other than Alfie Helmet, Alexander's uncle. His henchmen lowered their heads in shame. While Alfie is listing the things that are missing, a black car pulled up behind them. A man got out running and opened the back door just for one woman to get out. The women had long raven hair, just at her brother. Her blood-red eyes glowed a little giving her a scary vibe. This woman is none other than Alexandra, Alexandra's mother and the woman known globally as the godmother of the May world. For God's sake, she sighed as she made her way to her brother's group. Is it true that everything got stolen? Not even one is left, she asked her brother as the henchmen parted to let her in their circle. Alfie looked at the paper in his eyes yup, not even a small pistol is left he said. Alexandra frowned and took the paper, it was a list of firearms, from handguns to assault rifles. Her frown became deeper my son will not like this, she said. She can't even imagine how angry he will be when he hears about this. But hey, look at the bright side, called Alfie with a cheerful smile at least we didn't ship the bullets with the weapons, with this the weapons can't be used, he said. Alexandra could barely hold herself and not punch her brother right in the nuts. This is why father made Alexander the family head, she said harshly making Alfie feel like a bullet just went through his heart. His eyes teared up a little bit. His henchmen are sympathizing with him. Why? I just wanted to say that the guns can't be used against us, so we will have a lot easier time to find who stole them and end his pathetic life. Alfie's words made sense to everyone around him and they nodded alongside with him. They have the guns. They can get the bullets much easier. Bullets are much easier to get in due to their size. Alexandra looked at the giant ship in front of them and sighed God helps whoever stole my son's toys. In this world, there are people who are just plain stupid or people who are ignorant about this world's powerhouses. Alexandra can say with all her confidence that her family is one of the top powerhouses of this world, if not top 5, then top 10. That is the benefits of having a long bloodline in this world, each generation inherited the past generation's power and connection while making its own power and connection just to pass it to the next generation. This is how the Helmet family worked for years. I'll be going back now, I have an event I should attend this week. Alexandra turned to leave make sure you find who the culprit is, maybe then Alexandra will go easy on you guys she waved her head giving her brother and his henchmen a sliver of hope. Alfie may be Alexander's uncle but missions are still missions and they should be responsible for any mishaps. Alfie started working on investigating for evidence about who might this fool be who dared to cause him trouble. While Alfie is trying to save his life, the main tournament is near and a summoning message was sent out to all of the eight participants who won their right to advance to the main tournament. What are they calling us for again? Alexander yawned and scratched his head. He had just woken up from a nap when Alice came and dragged him out to show him the message. To inform us about the theme of the battle and who is our opponent, said Takumi, he adjusted his summer uniform and tightened his shoes. Let's go, everyone. Alice shouted from outside the room waiting for the boys to finish getting prepared. So loud, what's so exciting about this meeting that she can't wait to be there? 
asked Hyama while looking at the closed door. Probably to meet Lady Arena and kill her with jealously thought Ryo in his mind, but he didn't dare to voice that out. The last thing he would want is an angry Alice. God, just sent a letter with the theme and our opponent's names. Alexander jumped from the bed and took out his uniform to wear and nice leather shoes to replace his school shoes. Later the boys left the room to meet an annoyed Alice who just dragged them out. Natasha waved at the kids as they took their bikes and took off to the school. When they reached the building that was mentioned in the letter, they found one man wearing a bodyguard suit waiting outside. Please, go to the room that was mentioned in your letters, an elite ten member or teacher will be waiting for you, said the man. Alice took off her helmet and ran inside with a smug face, please be Irina, please be Irina, she can't wait to see Irina's face, what kind of expression she will make. What's the rush for, wondered Alexander. He and the boys placed the bikes on the side as they parted way to enter their own room. When Alexander entered, he was met with two men. Hello there, Sabu Alexander a white-haired boy with soul taking silver eyes spoke out. Tsukasa smiled at Alexandra who stood in the middle of the room. He nodded slightly and looked at the lazy muscular man who was wearing a winter hat beside Tsukasa, it was Tosuke Majishima, Totsuki's third seat. The man bowed slightly in acknowledgement but he didn't keep his eyes on Alexander for long as he said, we've called you here to say, he looked at Tsukasa. Tsukasa shook his head, this guy never changes, a man of few words, he thought. Tsukasa pulled out an envelope as a result of the lottery. Alexander Kun, you will participate in the first match tomorrow, your match will be the opening act. He handed the envelope to Alexander which he opened. Your theme will be. Noodles, said Tsukasa. Tsukasa stood up after what he had said. Now if you excuse me, I have far more important things to do Tsukasa left the room very quickly. Alexander looked at the third seat briefly questioning him. Your opponent will be here at any second he took Tsukasa's place and relaxed. Soon the door opened, revealing a large billed man in a race biker's clothes, his hair was done in braids. He eyed Alexander from up high due to their large high difference. Yo, are you scared? said Mimasaki Subaru. Chapter 57, Trace On, TSK, it wasn't Harina after all. Alice got out of her meeting room. The person who was in charge of informing her about her match details was Tatsuki's fourth and eighth seat. She was slightly disappointed about Harina not being there. But she quickly got over that as she realizes that she can go pay her grandfather a visit so then maybe she will accidentally meet Harina there. As Alice made a turn she hit her face in what seems like a giant wall. She fell down on her butt ouch. Watch where you going, said Alice as she looked up to see a giant ogre disguised as a human, but in fact, it was Mimasaki Subaru. Sorry about that. He extended his hand down to help her but she was looking at him with a funny expression, she couldn't believe that there was a human like this. After snapping from her daze, she took his hand and stood up sorry too, I wasn't careful enough. Even so, I am still sorry Subaru smiled as he patted her shoulder gently with his giant hand, Alice gave him a fake laugh before dismissing herself. Subaru followed her with his eyes before pulling out his phone and earphones, he listened closely before he making a smile suitable for an ogre. Next target, Subaru took off to another location to complete his plan I still need more material or I won't be able to trace his skills. After a few minutes, Alexander was already out of the building, he saw that his gang spikes are still untouched. So he figured out that they are still inside, then he waited for them to come out. While doing so, he called Vlad to bring him his knife to the North Star. This knife isn't just any knife, it's Alexandra's own personal knife that she gifted to him. It bears her proof of the countless dishes she made since her childhood. Yo, Alexander Hyama was the first one to come out. He saw Alexander squatting down near his bike with a phone in his hand. Alexander raised his chin up while his eyes never left his phone in response to Hyama's call. After a few moments, the whole squad was out. Alice jumped behind Alexander as they took off back to June's place. Hyama asked them for help in moving in some boxes. But while they were driving casually, they didn't notice a black motorcycle following them from behind slowly, just enough distance to keep them in his field of vision. Mimasaki Subaru was stalking Alexander very closely noting down his every move, the way he treats his friends and strangers, from the way he talks to the way he walks. Interesting, outside of June's place, Subaru was peeking from the window carefully his behavior is constantly changing. Subaru's big moment was when Alexander offered to make them lunch. He closed his eyes on Alexander examining his actions closely while trying to think a step or two ahead very difficult. He said slowly as he had a hard time tracing Alexander but it is not impossible. 
he thought. The day went like this, Subaru was with Alexander all day long, from when he was with June's place to his small date with Alice. Night fell down and Subaru followed them to the dorm. But sadly he couldn't advance any further than the Iron Gate, but this wasn't going to stop Subaru from finishing his complete tracing of Alexander's personality. He brought a rope and a telescope, he climbed a large wall and stood there like an owl fusing with the night's darkness. In another location, just behind Subaru with several meters, a black car was parking there. Two men were inside smoking but their eager eyes were locked on Subaru. Should we take him down? Asked one of them. He was a man with black hair and sky clear blue eyes. He wore a black Armani suit with a red icon of a blind man on his left side of his chest. He isn't doing anything threatening. Also, we can't just go around killing students. The boss will be angry his companion answered in a monotone manner. He was a blonde haired man with green eyes, like his friend. He had a black Armani suit with the red blind man on his chest. Sci fine, but if he stepped beyond that wall, I will shoot him down. Whatever. Just don't kill him. Subaru was a lucky man, he had no idea that he was walking on a fine threat of danger. Lucky for him he had didn't go any further or he will meet the rage of Alexander's secret guards. After a few moments, Subaru packed his stuff and rode his bike. He looked at his notebook and smiled trace completed. He turned on his bike and took off to train his tracing in his own personal kitchen. In his personal kitchen, Mimasaki Subaru is practicing his moves with a something like a speaker on one table. Food is served. He did an overdramatic pose as he said that trying to mimic Alexander. The speaker in on the table is giving off something like a conversation between several people. If you are questioning who are these people Subaru is spying on? Then hear this. Your match is the opening act? Takumi's voice came from the speaker. Yeah, came the lazy voice of Alexander. Against who? asked Alice. Someone named Nikamayu or Mimizaki, said Alexander not even bothering to remember his opponent name. This somehow ticked off Subaru, but since he was in his, Alexander mode, he ignored it and kept on practicing. Aren't you supposed to be practicing your dish? Kiyama's voice joined the conversation. What needs to be practiced? Have you ever heard of, chicken and soba noodle with ginger dressing? Asked Alexander. Immediately, Subaru's ear perked at that, he smiled slowly and his smile kept on growing and growing until he just straight up started laughing ha 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 ha. That's your dish? How pathetic. I hope this is a sign of good news. The door opened to Subaru's personal kitchen. Izan Sama? Izan smiled and leaned on the door I hope you are ready to take him down, it wasn't easy to get you two together in the first match. Subaru grinned don't worry Izan Sama, I have traced his way of cooking, with a little bit of practice, tomorrow's match is a set deal. That better be the case. Izan left Subaru to do his thing while things save Alexander, your days in Totsuki are soon to be over. Chapter 58, Official Inside the waiting room, Alexander was waiting for his match to begin, today is his first match in the autumn election main tournament. He is waiting patiently. He took out his knife and took a deep look at it. His knife was made of black steel, it was very sharp and majestic despite its small size. Alexander moved it a little to get the nostalgic feeling it has. How many years since the last time I used you? He though. Knock knock knock. Someone knocked on the door, Alexander thought it must be a staff member so he allowed him in, but the person who came in was none other than his opponent today, Mimasaki Subaru himself. What brought you here? asked Alexander, he moved his knife to its case which caused Subaru to smirk a little he is one of them too. He thought. I've come to advise you to surrender now and save yourself from the embarrassment, he said with a smile. Alexander raised his eyebrow with a funny expression you're serious? Of course. This is my kindness towards you, usually uprising stars are too fragile and can easily be broken by one single defeat, so I advise you again, give up while you can. The mocking grin never left Subaru's mouth, as Alexander looked up at him with confusion. You think I will lose to you? said Alexander. But of course. Then pass me whatever you're smoking Alexander laughed as he took his knife case and prepared to head out. Seeing this Mimasaki frowned as he thought he is hard to crack, without any material to use against him. I don't have anything to get him in my trap. Subaru looked at Alexander Case and thought for a moment that knife you have there, was it a gift from someone? He asked. Alexander stood up yeah, from my mum. He passed by Subaru and reached for the door. Then she must be an idiot. Said Subaru did she also pass her hopeless dream onto you? Did she say that you can achieve what she couldn't? She must have been the worst chef to walk on this earth to give such rusted knife. 
the disgusting thing is filled with her disgusting ideals and beliefs, said Subaru. Alexander stopped in his track and looked back at Subaru with a bored expression dude. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Chandra's room, a cute girl took the stage as she announced, the first match is about to start, as for the judges please welcome the headmaster of Totsuki himself, Nakari Sanziman. Everyone looked at the judges area where the headmaster is sitting with the other judges. The headmaster looks as healthy as ever, said a businesses man who has a good relationship with the Nakari group. Yes, he does. I swear that his aura became even stronger, said another businessman as he pushed his glasses up. The audience went wild seeing the assembly of the other judges as it appears they are well known in the cooking world. Natasha, the mother of the North Star looked at the judges and saw a familiar face that old thing is still alive. She looked at the little man beside the headmaster, he was a bald man with little hair lift on the side. He is Keiki Noshi Oizumi you really did become an industry big shot, huh? Her eyes watered as she remembered the fool who would run around the school screaming he will make his own company despite being poor. She then shifted her gaze to the other side of the arena, she saw her sister with her kids. Fumio was with the other polar star kids waiting for Soma's match to begin. Why are they not coming out yet? Asked Aisami who was beside Natasha. I don't know. She looked at the MC girl who was nervous herself too. She then saw one man go up to her and whispered something as the girl went in shock. She took the stage again, everyone, comma she said, there is a big announcement, everyone looked at each other in confusion waiting for the news to drop. Senziman frowned this better not cause the event to stop he thought. IT's an official shock Hoji, contestant Sabu Alexander and contestant Mimasaki Subaru decided to engage in a shock Hoji in today's match, comma the girl shouted as hard as she can sending the shocking news to everyone. A shock Hoji? In the autumn election? Are they crazy? Is it even allowed in the first place? Many reactions erupted in the audience arena due to the sudden shock Hoji. It is allowed, as long as both parties agreed to it, then it is allowed, said Sanziman shutting down the whole arena. And to confirm his words, the man responsible for overseeing every shock Hoji in Totsuki took to the stage, he took the mic and asked for the camera to focus on him. This the official paper that contains the next shock Hoji. He showed the paper to the camera according to what is agreed upon by both students. If Sabu Alexander lost, he will be expelled from Totsuki, he said. Everyone waited for him to continue but he folded the paper and hid it in his suit. The MC girl asked what everyone wanted to ask. But what about if Mimasaki Subaru lost? The man looked at her and said nothing. Chapter 59, Deal Let's go back a little in time, before Alexander and Subaru's shock Hoji is announced. Subaru had just finished insulting Alexander's mother even though he doesn't have the slightest idea about who she is. Alexander looked at him in boredom dude. His eyes weren't showing any kind of aggression, he looked at Subaru who clearly had no idea who his mother is, and his only purpose is to get him angry just tell me what you want, I don't have time for this nonsense, said Alexander. Subaru was pretty surprised, everyone had something they believe in, they trust, they return to when they are cornered. But this guy's different, no matter how hard he looked, he can't find a hole to drag him out from it, it's like he's invincible. Subaru sighed if it's like this then, a direct attack will works better he decided to change his strategy. I'm waiting, said Alexander. I challenge you, said Subaru pointing at Alexander to a shock Hoji. Alexander frowned at this this is the autumn election, we can't have a shock Hoji right now, he said. Yes, you can. The door opened revealing Izan who was listening outside all this time as long as both parties agree, then it is possible he pushed his glasses up with a smirk. You. Alexander was surprised seeing Izan here you're still hanging around? He asked. Izan frowned and why would I not? Subaru stepped in and once again pointed Alexandra do you agree to my challenge? Do you accept a shock Hoji? He declared. No way, and why would I accept a random challenge out of nowhere? Said Alexander making Subaru and Izan frown. So you don't even have the courage to defend your pride? said Subaru. Alexander shrugged and pushed his into the side to reach for the door I will defend my pride when you say something that actually makes sense and close to the truth as he was about to open the door, it was shot open hitting Alexander in the face hard on. I am here a sweet and high pitched voice came from a red headed beautiful girl as she declared here presences to everyone in the room did I hear a shock Hoji? she asked. She came to see Alexander and heard him talk with the two boys here, she was interested in their conversation and listened behind the door, only so she can bargain the perfect time. Rindo, said Izan with a nervous expression. It's Rindo Senpai, 
get that in your skull already Rindo poked his in's face as she shouted the way he should address. But anyway, where is Alexander? She asked after she made sure Izan understood that she is his senpai. As she questioned, she felt something cold on her tender legs. She looked down to see Alexander's hand on her leg. She looked at his face and saw his nose bleeding and his eyes full of rage. He suddenly stood up and put his hand on her neck about to choke her. You. Alexander was about to break her neck. Wait wait wait, it's me, remember? Hey, cough hey. Rindo's face turned red as blood was blocked in her head. Thankfully Alexander recognized her and released her, but he didn't let her go without knocking her head with a punch. Ouch. That was cruel, she cried. And what am I going to say about my bleeding nose? shouted Alexander as he covered his nose. Subaru and Azan looked from the sidelines as the two argues. What brought you here? he asked. Rindo adjusted her messy red hair why didn't you tell me you go to Tonsuki? That was unfair of you, she said with a pout. Alexander looked at the other way you were gonna find out anyway he said. And you had a fiancé too? She said with her eyes narrowed, she inched towards Alexander as he stepped back. You were gonna find out anyway, he said. Rindo smiled at him as she inched even closer. Ahem, Rindo, senpai, if you don't mind, we were having a serious conversation here said Izan, him and Subaru merged with the background as Alexander and Rindo entered their own world. Conversation. Oh, yeah, you guys were about to go in a shock hokey, right? She said excitingly. Yes, and I hope you said Izan, but his words were cut short by Alexander. No, we weren't. I never agreed to be part of your little game said Alexander. Izan and Subaru looked at each other as their plan was about to fail. Izan relied on Subaru to provoke Alexander into a shock hokey, but it seems he wasn't successful in that. Why not? asked Rindo with a surprised face. Because, said Alexander. Come with me for a moment. Excuse us for a moment Rindo pulled Alexander to the corner away from Subaru and Izan who were confused like never before. Rindo leaned with Alexander down a little here is the deal hash and dollar plus hash 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 plus hash hash, are we clear? What? That wasn't the plan, shouted Alexander, whatever that deal was, Alexander didn't seem to like it at all. Relax, but if you won I at plus hash dollar and at hash degree cent degree pound tilde how about that? Alexander became quiet for a moment and looked down to think, he then stood up and shook Rindo's hand deal, he said. Rindo and him smirked from ear to ear before shifting their gaze to Subaru and Azan who felt like they became a prey to savage animals all of a sudden. Let's do this shock hoji then said Alexander. Chapter 60 Now, everyone, with the unexpected development of our first match, the autumn election will witness its first shock hoji match ever, the two gentlemen responsible for such event are two of the top contesters in the previous preliminaries battle, the MC girl is hyping up the audience for the battle between Subaru and Alexander. While the MC girl is busy doing her work, in the waiting room, Alexander is surrounded by his friends. What happened? Why did you suddenly get in a shock hoji with that giant? asked Alice while shaking Alexander back and forth. That is right, and you demanded nothing in return. If you lose you will end up kicked out of Totsuki, said Takumi supporting Alice. Alexander was getting dizzy from all that shaking and constant nagging from Takumi. Kiyama sighed at the sight in front of him just what happened? he asked. Well. Alexander stopped Alice from shaking him and escaped her grip I had a deal with someone, if I win, that person will do me a great favor he said trying as much as possible not to bring Rindo in the conversation. What kind of favor? asked Alice can it, can it be a sexual favor? She covered her mouth in shock as she imagined her fiancé with someone else. Of course not, but don't worry, I will tell you about it when I am done with that giant. Alexander patted Alice's head and headed out leaving everyone in his waiting room. There was a big screen so they can have a better view of the match from here than watching outside. Yo turned on the screen and the MC girl appeared. Please welcome from the North Star, the man with the top score in the history of Totsuki's autumn election, ladies and gentlemen, Sabu Alexander. Comma she shouted as Alexander stepped in the arena with the audience cheering him on, mostly girls. Some people even recognized him as that the heir of the Red Cloud? One man with a moustache questioned. Indeed, Sabu Alexander, I have seen him once in a business meeting between my company and his, but that was four years ago, he had certainly grown up properly, said another woman. Alexander stepped in the arena and waved at the audience a little before he opened his case and brought out his knife. Our next contestant is the man who came last and pushed three people out of the main tournament, Mimasaki Subaru. 
Subaru came in with a smug face, looking only at Alexandra as expected. He would prepare his tools first then wait quietly while sitting on a chair. Subaru was glad his tracing is working fine. He struggled this time to trace Alexander. It was no easy feat, but he still managed to do it with all of his experience. Alexander Kun, Senziman. The director of Totsuki called for Alexander amid the loud room. Alexander flinched when he heard Senziman calling his name. He was the last person Alexander wanted to meet right now. It was a miracle that Senziman didn't crash in his dorm in the past few days. Yes, Senziman Dono Alexander stood up with an awkward smile. There is something we need to talk about seriously after this. Senziman support his head with his fist and lean to the side of his chair right now. I am really upset. Your dish today will decide if I should let the matter go easily or should I make your life a little harder. His voice was a little cold and harsh. He looked at Alexander with vengeance. Of course Senziman heard the news about Alexander taking Alice as his fiancée, but even more importantly, he got the news about him taking another girl at the same time as his grandchild as a fiancée. If Senziman wasn't angry, he would be a failure as a grandfather. Don't worry about it Senziman Dono, I will make the best noodles you've ever tasted. You better. Senziman grinned a little also, it is grandfather, not Senziman Dono. You understand? Alexander laughed awkwardly of course. Of course, grandfather. Mimasaki heard their conversation and wondered about their relationship could it be they related. Oh, I forgot, he is dating an Akari. After figuring the relationship, Subaru looked at Alexander Sabu Alexander. He called. What? Accepting this challenge was a mistake you will regret for the rest of your life Subaru declared as he laughed as hard as he can. What the actual fuck? You basically were begging me to accept this challenge and now you are saying it was a mistake? Alexander got a little irritated, he wanted to punch Subaru in the face for these words but he didn't get the chance as the MC cut them off. Now ladies and gentlemen, the first battle and shock Hoji of the autumn election start now. A loud buzz sound echoed signaling the start of the match. Simultaneously, Subaru and Alexander ran to do their station while the crowd cheered them on. Everyone was curious about what kind of dish that these are gonna make. Alexander took out a small bowl and combined the soy sauce, vinegar, honey, sesame oil, ginger, and garlic. His hands moved swiftly without the slightest amount of stiffness, his muscles remember the way to cook things unconsciously. Next, he heated the canola oil in a heavy sauté pan over medium-high heat, added the mushrooms and sauté until it became tender. After four minutes, he transferred it to a large serving bowl. Seasoned the chicken with the salt and pepper before adding it to the skillet, reduced the heat to medium, and cooked it until cooked nicely, about five minutes per each side. Done with that, Alexander placed them on a cutting board and let them rest, uncovered, for ten minutes. Everyone was amazed at the speed which Alexandra was moving, not a single second passed by without him doing something. His face was relaxed with a slight smile. He didn't pay attention to anything around him and just worked. But if he paid attention behind him, he would hear loud noises coming from the audience. Oi, aren't they? Yeah, it's the same. How come they are making the same dish? The students recognized the two making the same dish and couldn't help but feel that something was wrong. Senziman smiled slightly as his eyes looked at the young teens in front of him. This is why Totsuki is for the same dish, two different chefs, but only one can prevail. In the waiting room, Alice and the gang watched from the screen with a frown. This is giving me the creeps, said Alice. Kiyama looked deeply in the movement of Alexander and Subaru, his eyes were scanning them like a radar. It's like as if they are the same person, said Kiyama. He is copying Alexander, said Ryu, his words made everyone look at him with confusion. He pulled out his phone and searched for a little inside it. He then showed Tatsuki newspaper, Subaru was in the headline. Since middle school, he was known for his ability to copy any dish perfectly and he is using that ability on Alexander right now. He pointed at the screen. Takumi looked at the two once more and his eyes widened they are really the same. Look, he picked the same ingredients at the same time as Alexander. It's like I am looking at Alexander's shadow clone but a little uglier than a gorilla, said Alice. While this seems like bad news, no one was worried about Alexander. After all, they believe that he will not lose to some copycat when he managed to score 100 points. And on top of that, he was one of them their friend, and they believe in him. Back in the arena, at the audience area, Rindo stood there watching with her hands in her pockets and her eyes sparkling with stars. Now, show me how are you gonna overcome this, my dear fiancé, Fufafafu Tilda. 
Rindo was having the best time of her life. She had finally got something interesting to relieve her boredom, and she is willing to go to great length to keep herself entertained, even if it means getting in a three-way relationship with Alexander and his other girl. Chapter 61, Commander in Chandra's Room, Alexander was battling against Mimasaki Subaru. He took his knife and cut the chicken he let to rest for ten minutes uncovered earlier and cut it into nice cubic shapes, he used his knife as if it is part of his body. He turned around and left the cut pieces and started to prepare for the noodles. He took out his suitcase and brought a bag of soba noodles, as he bent down, he saw with the corner of his eyes, Subaru taking out from the same looking bag as his a bag of soba noodles. His eyes widened a little at that but he wasn't surprised, it is not there is only one bag of soba noodles in the world. But his eyes widened more when he heard the crowd shout. Again, he made the same move as Alexander again, he is really making the same dish. It is like I am watching a mirror fight. There is no doubt, Mimasaki Subaru is copying Sabu Alexander. Hearing this, Alexander walked to Subaru station and looked at his table, he found cubic shaped chicken pieces, the same as his. Surprised? asked Subaru with an ugly smug face. Alexander gave a cold side look here, you're good he straightened his back and smiled but do you really think you'll win with this? he asked. Of course I can Subaru. Alexander chuckled you know I can change the dish midway through, right? Subaru didn't seem to be affected by Alexander's words as he opened the bag of the noodles and so am I. Alexander turned and waved back at him try your best. I also know, called Subaru. Alexander halted and looked back I also know that your pride won't allow you to change the recipe just because I am copying you. He smirked and laughed as hard as he can. Alexander didn't dwell on the matter and went back to his station. There he looked at the ingredients in front of him and went into a state of daze. Copying me? He clenched his fist you are saying that I am some low level chef who can be copied? Anger was building up inside Alexander like never before. You mean you can do what I can? Alexander clenched his teeth and stabbed his knife on the cutting board scoring the nearby MC girl who was busy commenting on the match. The camera focused on Alexander's angry face, his golden eyes glowed under the arena's heavy lights. In the waiting room, Alice, who had witnessed this before in the past got chills on her back you went and done it now, you should have just stayed quiet, she said. The boys with her agreed with her, they have seen Alexander angry before but not to this level. All they can do is watch as Alexander deals with the situation and his anger. In the arena, Subaru chuckled as he saw Alexander trembling, he didn't see the screen displaying his angry face, so he thought Alexandra was trembling from fear they all have the same reaction, when they realize that there is no escaping from me, they all, break down he said as he throws his last ingredients in a pot and turns on the fire. Back to Alexander, after calming down, he looked back at Subaru and chuckled while shaking his head geez. You had me gone crazy for a moment there he thought. It's not an everyday accuracy that Alexandra gets so angry about something. He pulled his knife from the cutting board after a little struggle and continued his cooking normally. Subaru was right, Alexander has a level of pride that won't allow him to change his dish just because someone is copying it. But no one said anything about ending the playtime and getting a little serious. Mimasaki Subaru, called Alexander getting his opponent's attention. What is it? You lost said Alexander. Huh? Not understanding what Alexander meant, Subaru who was using his, Alexander mode, decided to ignore it just like what Alexander would do to something he didn't understand. Alas, he should have not ignored Alexander, in the end, no matter how much accurate is Subaru's copy of Alexander, he is not the real deal, he does not possess all those skills and abilities that Alexander is still hiding. One of Alexander's numerous skills is his ability to bring out the maximum output of any ingredient as if he is communicating with ingredients and commanding them to show their true flavor making each flavor in his dish stand out better than anything else. This ability is not excluded to Alexander only, many have it, but they all fail in one aspect, controlling the flavor, no one wants to eat a dish that doesn't have rhythmatic flavor. No one wants to eat a messy dish no matter how good it is. Alexander added the soba noodles to the boiling water and cooked with the utmost care. He drained and rinsed it with cool water to stop the noodles from overcooking. Added the noodles to the vegetables in the bowl, and then tossed it in the soy sauce dressing. He placed the cubic shaped chicken pieces on top of the noodle mixture, sprinkled green onions over the top. Bring out your flavor. Alexander ordered as he finished his dish. Oi, I am ready. Alexander patted the MC girl on her shoulder. Eh? Ah. 
The first contestant to finish is Sabu Alexander, he will be the first to present his dish to the judges. Subaru didn't mind and continued cooking, just like Alexander who never cared about who served first or last. Alexander walked to the judges with five plates in his hands, he served them a hot bowl of noodles, just its mere steam has a strong and heavy smell that pleases anyone who smells it. Senziman smiled as he straightened his back and took out two chopsticks. Let me see. He looked at Alexander slightly who had a smile on his face if you made something special or not. The arena held its breath, as the demon of the May world took the first bite. Now, will Alexander win? Knowing he did not change the recipe or try to counterattack Subaru's skill. Will Subaru's tracing work against Alexander? Will he prevail against Alexander? So many questions, so little answers. Chapter 62 Skills The arena went quiet as the demon of the May world took the first bite. Without any notice, Senziman's clothes busted out leaving him with his old-fashioned underwear, his face displayed pleasure. His face was red from how hot the noodles are, he didn't care about how hot it is, he didn't care about burning his tongue. All he knows is that he needs to eat more, the flavor is calling for. Senziman Dono? The bald chibi old man who was with Senziman as a judge looked in shock at the strong reaction displayed by Senziman, his fellow judges all had the same shocked face, let's not talk about the students in the audience arena. Their reactions can't be described in one word. The other judges follow after Senziman and took a taste, and what a taste. It was a roller coaster of flavors, each one is as strong as the other. Ooh. What is that? Rindo jumped up and down as she saw Senziman and the others fall in love with the noodles dish I want to taste it too. She said with glowing eyes. Senziman opened his eyes and found himself in the lands of flavors. He could swear he saw a chicken running away from a man made of noodles. What is this? he thought. The noodle man looked at Senziman and snouted Senziman Chan, come and catch this chicken with me. Senziman was stunned but an unknown force moved his body after the chicken, after a while he was able to catch. Now eat, ordered the noodle man. Again, that unknown force forced Senziman to eat the living chicken even though he realizes it is not cooked. But he couldn't be thankful enough, for that force he was able to experience another wave of chicken flavors. The audience were amazed, even the MC girl couldn't comment on the situation and just waited for the results. Soon, the pleasure from the noodle dish made by Alexander started to die down as Senziman followed by the other judges came back from the flavor lands. Senziman looked down at his empty plate and then Alexander, he wished he could get more but alas, there seems to be no more. And to confirm that, Alexander who was sitting back at his station shook his head and shrugging his shoulders. Excuse me. The deep voice of Subaru came from behind the MC girl scaring her like a cat. I am ready to serve my dish. He claimed shamelessly. Mimasaki Subaru is ready to serve his dish, please pay attention, she announced. Subaru passed by Alexandra as they glanced at each other, the way they eyed each other were much as if they were the same person. But they didn't dwell so much on the matter and Subaru proceeds to present his dish. When Senziman uncovered the bowl, it was the same dish as Alexander, the same decoration, the same ingredients, but, what about the taste? You have an interesting ability there, young child, said the chibi judge beside Senziman. Indeed. Senziman smiled, he wasn't disturbed by the fact that he copied Alexander's dish, it is not his place to be upset about it. He has a mission and that is to judge each individual dish. The judges took a sample as a smile formed on their lips, it grows with each bite they took. Soon, Senziman stripped again from the explosive taste, he closed his eyes to fully understand the mechanism of this dish and value its true taste. No sooner, the judges came back to reality. The tasting is complete, I wonder whose dish will prevail? Both dishes were fantastic, I can feel the dedication put into the two, said one judge. I can't agree more, said Senziman alas, only one dish can win. He continued as he stood up and picked up a giant brush and started swinging powerfully as he wrote Alexander's name. The crowd screamed as Alexander announced as the winner. In the waiting room, Alice jumped with their fist in the air yes, she shouted. Takimi looked at her as he rubbed his ear be quiet will you? You almost broke my eardrums, he said. Whatever, I am just happy that Alexander won, said Alice. In the Chandra's room, Subaru could not believe his own ears and eyes. I, I, I lost. He thought no, that can't be, my tracing worked perfectly, no. Alexander was looking with a smirk at the breaking down boy in front of him. That is really an amazing ability, said Alexander as he tapped Subaru's shoulder. Subaru slapped his hand off shut up. 
I did not lose, he must have sided with you. There is no way my tracing didn't work on you, Subaru pointed at Senziman who returned to his resting position. It did work, that's what got me angry back then, said Alexander with shrug if you didn't have that little provoking conversation back then, I guess we could have tied or worst, you could even win over me. Then how? He shouted, Subaru wanted to know how he lost if his tracing was working just fine. Simple, you traced my behavior as a chef, which allowed you to tap on a few skills of mine, but in the end, you are still far weaker to obtain my, absolute flavor, ability. Alexander left the stage and went down as he waved at Subaru who was stunned. Come and challenge me once you've become stronger, he said. As Alexander passed by the judges, he heard the words he didn't wish to hear now. Alexander, Senziman called. Alexander flinched and turned with a fake smile at him. Yes, grandfather, he asked. We will talk after this tournament, so be sure you don't disappear like always. Senziman looked at Alexander with pressuring Alexander who laughed awkwardly at that. Of course not, said Alexander, he went down the passage out of the stage and left the room. Just get Alzheimer already he thought. Chapter 63, only one is qualified leaving the stage, Alexander met with Takumi in the hallway. You are next, he asked. Takumi nodded yeah, guess who is my opponent? He smirked. Alexander shrugged and yawned what, Alice? Hyama? You? Who cares? Takumi picked up his suitcase on his shoulder and passed by Alexander to the Chandra's room. It's your brother, he said. Alexander looked back slowly oh, now I care, he said in a low voice. Alexander commenced in his path to the waiting room where his friends are gathered, as soon as he opened the door, Alice hugged him and congratulated him, it is nice to have a girl who cheers you on at all times. That was a close call there, wasn't it? said Hyama with a mocking smile. A tick mark appeared on Alexander's forehead what close call? I totally destroyed him there Alexander didn't like the idea of him loosing at all. That is right, Alexander didn't struggle at all. Alice came to defend her fiancé. Tell him baby, shouted Alexander as the couple teamed against Hyama. Even if he looked so angry that he could murder someone and he had to step up his game so he can defeat that guy, said Alice with confidence. Oi! You didn't have to mention that part, Alexander said to his girl. Kiyama sighed and got up from his chair, he looked at the screen where Takumi is facing Soma. I am going to prepare for my match, I am next he left the waiting room. Well, my dear, I will go to order a few tools for my match Alice left Alexander with a kiss on the cheek. Me too, Yo followed behind Alice leaving Alexander alone standing in the middle of the room like a statue. I am left alone like a pet inside its owner's home Alexander walked to the couch and sat there slowly. He crossed his feet on the table and slowly submitted to the comfort of the couch as he watched his brother and Takumi battle their hearts out. Their theme seems to be, cakes, Alexander was able to realize that by the ingredients scattering around their stations, and also because. The MC girl was yelling that out to everyone like her life depends on it, she was getting paid after all. Alexander watched as his brother pulled some candy pack and mixed it with the cream. Alexander couldn't help but facepalm himself here he goes again. He thought. Using candy packs in your ingredients or anything that is manufactured is very clever and innovative but there is a limit to how far that can take you, Alexander can admit that his brother is very talented and creative but he needs to start walking by the recipe. What made Alexander feel even more annoyed is that he saw Takumi used some fresh natural ingredients in his recipe. He was crushing the cocos beans with his own hands and then taking the fine powder and mixing it with the other ingredients. Takumi clearly the best ingredients that Soma is lacking. Alexander doesn't know if his brother realizes that he can order the staff to get him the necessary ingredients like Takumi, but apparently he didn't care. Soon, Takumi served his cake first, it was a black tower like cake, it was filled with chocolate from the inside and out, just pressing the knife on it made open to let the filling goes out slowly. The heavy chocolate smell made the judges feel excited to take a taste. The judges' reaction were vastly different as the cake had one more secret, each corner had a different kind of chocolate mixed in it making the judges taste the same cake but get different tastes. Next was Soma, his cake was round one covered in small pieces of candy packs. The judges took a taste and they felt the candy crush under the pressure of their teeth giving it a crunchy feeling, following the crunchy feel, the taste of the caramel started sneaking in their mouths as it hit them unexpectedly. Soma's cake can be described as a mystery cake. You never know which taste you will get due to the various flavors of the candy packs. 
Even Alexander was amazed at that idea before he was sure that his brother's chance of losing is 87c o but now he is not sure, he is even suspecting he will win. Nice idea. He thought, he even looked at Takumi and saw him realizing what Soma did there, he started to get worried. Soon, Senzimon took the chance to speak after tasting the two cakes. Indeed, he said, this year's generation is full of surprises like these two cakes, one is mysterious chocolate tower, while the other is awfully mystery box, being the first ever to eat from them is my greatest honor, said Senzimon, his speech got in the hearts of the two boys as they realized that their cakes managed to convey the flavor and the idea they wished for. Sadly, among these two cakes, only one can qualify its maker to pass this round, said Senzimon. He returned to his seat and took out a small whiteboard along the other judges. They wrote down the one they believe he deserves to pass to the next round. The five judges raised their boards as the hall held its breath from the tension going around. The result was. Takumi, two votes. Soma, three votes. Yeah, I know, I don't like that either, I can first see why your comments are gonna be like. But just be aware that I felt Soma and Takumi are a little equal at this stage, not yet for the overpowered Takumi. Remember what I said about an outcome that I regret. Well, this is it. Soma raised his fist up as his victory was announced and the crowd cheered for him, and his opponent too. Alexander smiled at his brother's victory, but his eyes looked at a certain judges. Sadly my brother, your cake was approved by that demon after all. Alexander looked at Senzim and Whiteboard you won, but you didn't get the most important vote of them all. Yes, Nakari Senzim and votes for Takumi's cake, he believed that this cake was made with utmost care and detection in every step. He still can't deny that Soma did too. But Takumi made a natural cake with fresh ingredients from nature and he shaped the way he wanted. But sadly, he could not beat Soma's creativity, yet. Takumi sighed and looked at his brother in the audience area and smiled with a hint of sadness. The two brothers shared the pain of losing together. Natasha smiled at her two boys you that great, little one, she said with encouragement. Takumi then left the room and headed towards the waiting room. In another place, outside of the Chandra's room. Alice was guiding a truck inside. Yes, go back further, that's right. Just like that Alice guided the driver as he drives in reverse. Her lower high-pitched voice came from behind her as a delicate hand tapped her shoulder. She turned to see who it is and it turned out to be your friendly neighborhood red-headed Rindo Senpai. Chapter 64, Assassin and the Next Battle At the Red Cloud Company, Alfie is in the head office listening to Vlad's report who was standing in front of him. His sister Alexandra is laying on the couch watching her stepson battle against Takumi. So, let me get this straight, you mean that our guns are at the Estuya kids' warehouses? Asked Alfie with a frown. Yes, our spy mentioned that they are keeping an eye for the bullets shipment. I think they want to use these weapons against us, sir, said Vlad with a hint of mockery. Alfie leaned back on his chair and faced himself we are being looked down at he said since when someone could take our weapons and use them against us, this boy thinks he is smart. Alfie laughed at the matter and was joined by Vlad. He is smart indeed, said Alexandra as she changed the channel if he wasn't, he wouldn't be able to get his hands in our territory and even steal from us. You shouldn't underestimate him, brother Alexandra stretched her arms and yawned. Then what do you suggest, my dear sister? asked Alfie. Alexandra stood up and walked to the glass wall to get a better view at the city under them. I suggest that you take the current weapons that we have and get as many men as you could, block a few streets and assault their base tonight. Alexandra didn't even blink when she said these dangerous words, her brother looked at her and smiled. I wish it was that easy sister, we don't have the necessary guns currently to carry an assault on their base, and I suspect that they already have some bullets in their possession already said Alfie it is a risky move and we still don't have full control on the media and the higher ups of this country, we are still getting in touch with Roberto's men and his connections here, he shrugged his shoulders and continued but we could end it real quick if we just assassinated him, but unfortunately, his home is secure enough to discover any suspicious behaviors, our spy on there is barely doing his job. Alexandra didn't look at her brother and stayed quiet for a moment, she thought about the matter and then opened her mouth to speak, but before she could say what was on her mind, the door was knocked and someone entered. It was a man with a light beard and black raven hair split in the middle, he wore a black suit that was anything but good, it was filled with holes and blood all over it. Alexandra's eyes widened at this unusual entrance, she then looked at her brother and smiled looks like your problem is solved, brother she shifted her blood eyes at the man who stood beside Vlad isn't that right, Kinu? asked Alexandra. 
Kine looked at her calmly with no emotion on display at all, he shifted his gaze between Alfie, Alexandra, and Vlad, he was looking for someone and everyone could see that. What are you looking for, Kinu? asked Alexandra. Where is the young master? he asked. Alexandra sighed and pointed at the TV, everyone followed her finger and looked at the TV he is there, she said. Kinu was a smart man, and he immediately realized why she was referring to, he turned around to leave and head towards Totsuki. Wait wait wait. Alfie stood quickly and stopped Kinu in his track. What? asked Kinu. I need you for some work he answered. I do not take orders from you Kinu didn't want to waste any time so he can go and report the details of his mission to his boss quickly. Wah. Alfie got shocked, Alexandra and Vlad almost laughed at him but they managed to hold it back in. Kinu wasn't a man you can order around whenever you want, only Alexander can do so. Let him go, brother, Alexander will send him to do the work later, said Alexandra, she shook her head and smiled I guess, my son is bound to find about the matter sooner or later, but the sooner is better. Kinu didn't stay for long, he left immediately leaving Alfie on the verge of crying come back, Kinu, come back he said like a certain heroine in a certain movie. Alexandra couldn't help it anymore and just burst out laughing at her brother who was already sweating from imagining what Alexandra's reaction will be like. While this is unfolding, in the Chandra's room, Takumi and Soma's much was done and the stage was being prepared for the next round. In Alexandra's waiting room, from behind the door, you could hear loud noises coming from the inside. It sounds like a fight taking place inside as you could hear things getting smashed on the walls and loud screams. But that was half true. Things were indeed being smashed on the floor, loud noises were indeed there, but it wasn't exactly screams or shouting, it was the hysteric laughing of Alexander. He was laughed and evading the thrown stuff at him by Takumi who had a red face. Ha 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 ha. You lost. You lost. You idiot. Ha 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 ha. He had tears on his cheeks. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up shouted Takumi. What? I am only saying the truth Alexander was having the time of his life teasing his little friend here. So you've chosen to die? said Takumi as he raised a chair. Oh, wait, wait, look. Alexander pointed at the screen, Takumi stopped and looked at the screen and he saw the next battle about to start. He stopped laughing and focused as he looked at the opponents facing each other. Oh, that is interesting, said Takumi as he quickly forgot about his anger. In the screen, Two students faced each other, one boy and one girl. The boy had a nasty face filled with a maniac and eye bags, but his most iconic item is his bandana that acts as a switch to his personality. Yes, this boy is none other than the Buzikaru. While on the other corner facing him, a snow white girl with blood eyes and white as a cloud hair stood there with an irritated face filled with anger and hatred for some hidden reason, but most likely due to her earlier encounter with a certain someone. She was Nakari Alice. Ladies and gentlemen, the next battle is between Nakari Alice Sama and Kuro Kibayo. The match begins. Now. Chapter 65 Pancakes. The next match was between Alice and her servant Yu. It was a match that lit the other students on fire. These were very famous in their middle school days, especially Yu with his raging personality. Alice went to her station and took out her knife. She traced her finger around it as she whispered, How deep should I stab her? She wondered with a shallow smile on her face, even Yahoo managed to hear her shivered unconsciously. Just enough so she won't need to go to the hospital, she whispered as she giggled cutely. My lady, we're about to start, said Yahoo as he saw the MC preparing to announce the beginning of the match, so he had to warn his lady or she will give him hell later on for it. Oh, thank you, Yahoo, I was thinking about something else, I really didn't realize we're about to start in an instant. Alice returned to her normal self and finished preparing her tools. Yo too finished his stuff and waited for the match to begin. Now, we got for ourselves a match between two of the most powerful students back in Totsuki's middle school, and arguably a we of the most powerful in here too. Today's match is between Lady Alice and her aide, Yo. The crowd cheered for the two, well. Mostly Alice but still, the students were excited to see what kind of dish will the two make? Who'll win? Who will lose? This time around, the these for this battle is, the MC girl made a dramatic pause then shouted as loud as she can, pancake. The crowd was shocked, pancake, that was like the most basic dish they had ever made. How is this even a challenge? Good grief, those elite ten are mocking us, do they think that our level is this low? Said Alice with a slight smile, she then. Who knows, said Yo as he pulled his bandana out and started raging on anything that comes near him, 
the poor little MC girl. It didn't take long for the two to start making their dish. Alice stepped down from the stage and from the giant side door, a trailer started entering in rivers when it reached near Alice station, it opened to reveal a set of machines that Alice intends to use to enhance her dish. The crowd were awestruck at what is unfolding in front of them. What is that thing? shouted someone. Is it even allowed? asked someone else. This is too much for an overkill, added another. Don't you think this is too much for pancakes? asked another. While the crowd is throwing those statements around, the demon looked at his granddaughter and smiled of course it is allowed. He said, even though he spoke in a low voice, his voice managed to reach the crowd in order to make the best dish possible. For a chef, nothing is prohibited, he said. Yo looked at Alice as she turned on her machine and frowned as always, you still rely on these pretty tools, no matter how pretty your dish is, if it doesn't have the essence of a me, then it is a failure he semi shouted, just enough so Alice can hear him. Alice smiled and gave Yo a cold glare I am already pissed off, so don't make me even more pissed with your stupid comments, Yo, said Alice. Biyo was her nickname for Yo in his berserker form you know pretty well that these machines are not only to make my dish pretty but to generate the best possible ingredients to make the pancakes I want, no matter what, the flour made by my machines is far better than those who are made by the old and rusty one you have there she smirked at you and waved at him as she went to pick the bag of flour that her machine made. Hurry up be yo, or you will lose, she said as she put the flour in a bowl with a pinch of salt and sugar. The time of me Cecily relying on tools is over. She thought if I ever wanted to be beside him, this is the least I need to do, I can be a much better chef than the me right now. Yo smirked evilly as he pulled out his flour bag and started baking, he can't afford to lose, not anymore, if he wants to surpass Alice and go beyond her, he needs to give it his all. In the waiting room, Alexander yawned as he watched the battle between Yo and Alice, he then shifted his gaze at his friend there who was sitting beside him on the couch while looking down, still not over his loss. What is wrong, Takumi? asked Alexander. Takumi sighed and clenched his sleeves tightly I still can't believe I lost, my cack was absolutely better, I don't believe that mine was inferior to his he said. Alexander shifted his gaze at the screen to continue watching there were five judges, you got two votes, the most important votes of the judges. He said Takumi frowned a loss is still a loss, no matter who voted for me, he said. True, you lost, Soma's cake was complex and unexpected with different colorful flavors, that complexity blinded the other judges into thinking that it was a better cake than yours, said Alexander, he sighed and continued yours was honestly plain in its look, its most outstanding feature is the tower-like shape, as they say, the eye eats first. The judges were attracted to the pretty and complex flavor of Soma's dish and discarded your simple but yet strong flavor. But that didn't affect the strong veterans of the front lines, they were able to grasp the pureness of your cake and those gave you their votes. Takumi thought deeply about the matter, but no matter what, he will not make excuses for his loss. Besides, after this is over, go challenge him to a shock her he and beat his ass then, said Alexander with a shrug. Takumi suddenly stood up that's it, he shouted, he turned and left the room in a hurry I will go challenge him now, he said before his voice faded in the hallway. Take care. Alexander said lazily as he adjusted his sitting position and stretched his legs and more to watch the battle between his fiancé and her aide. The door was open as and someone entered, Alexander didn't bother to check who it was, who would even come to his waiting room other than his friends. The person who entered came behind Alexander and covered his eyes guess who am I? A sweet and lovely voice came from the red-headed princess when she covered Alexander's eyes. I don't know, maybe I will know if you let me see, said Alexander not bothering to play along. Moo, so mean, and here I came to say hi to my dear and soon-to-be husband said the red princess as she jumped on the couch and sat beside Alexander. This red princess was none other than Kobayashi Rindo herself. Chapter 66, Get Along? While watching Alice and Ryo's battle in his waiting room, Alexander was ambushed by a wild Rindo who was currently sitting with him on the couch devouring all the snacks in his room while never taking her eyes off the battle on the TV. Ooh, what is that machine? she asked, I wanna play with it. Alexander shook his head as he watched his now fiancé as she enjoyed herself with his company. So did you guys get along? asked Alexander as he looked at the watch on the wall. Rindo looked at him fast. Do you mean me and her? she pointed at Alice. And who else I might be talking about? said Alexander. Ha ha ha. She suddenly started laughing out of nowhere making Alexander feel very confused as he tilted his head. What is so funny? he asked. 
Window tried to calm down as she raised her hand signaling for him to wait she, she. She tried to kill me. Ha 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 ha. Window couldn't help but continue laughing as she remembered what happened earlier. What? Alexander looked at her in a funny manner. Did Alice really try to kill her? That can't be, he said. Well, Rindo finally put down her bowl of food and looked at Alexander in the A's. I admit that I did provoke her a little, just a little bit she said. She tried to kill you, so I am assuming that you didn't just provoke her a little bit, said Alexander. Rindo shrugged her shoulders cutely. Just what did you say to her? he asked. That's a secret between the two of us. Rindo winked at him cutely as she returned to the match. Oh. They are deciding the winner, shouted Rindo as she went closer to the TV. Alexander sighed as he looked at her helplessly, he realized that his life will have a lot of turbulences and most of them will be caused by this red-haired girl beside him. In the arena, Alice and Via had served their dishes and are waiting for the winner to be announced. Alice's dish is a pancake coated with sugar cane juice and filled with a slight amount of chocolates. While Yo completely made a new dish, his dish was shrimp mixed pancake with honey and ketchup, the combination is a strange one but the taste is absolutely top tier. You always try to make everything about seafood, don't you? said Alice. And you try to make everything as pretty as possible answer be you. Both dishes were phenomenal and managed to make Senzim and strip for them. But ultimately, this competition makes it so only one student can pass through to the second round. The other judges had already made their judgment and told Senzimon about their choice. Senzimon stood up and took his giant brush and wrote down passionately on the large paper. The camera focused on what he is writing. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the third much of the autumn election first round is, Nakari Alice Sama. Alice jumped and made a V sign to the camera, she was so happy as she hugged her grandfather tightly. Yo, on the other hand, was raging and cursing demanding for a rematch that he had to be escorted by the security, only after Alice took his bandana off that he managed to calm down as peaceful Yo emerged again. Alice was celebrating her victory as she rubbed in Yo's face as they made their way to the waiting room. Foo -fa -fa foo this marks my 291 to 257 win against you, Yo Kun. I know, my lady, said Yo in an oddly calm but yet annoyed voice. Alice and Ryo met with Takumi as he came back on their way. Oh. It's loser Kun. Nice to meet you said Alice without hesitation causing a vine to pop out of Takumi's forehead instantly. The two started a series of insults as they made their way to the waiting room. Just, what did I do to deserve this torture? Ryo was questioning his life choices again. When they reached the door, Alice opened the door with frustration from her little insult battle with Takumi, but her frustration evolved into the rage when she witnessed the event in front of her. In front of her, Rindo is sitting on Alexander's lap as she faced him, their stance was that of an affectionate couple who were about to engage in their holy actions. Alice clenched her hands and shouted that's it, yo give me a knife. She ran towards Rindo who was smirking from ear to ear and tried to catch her, not even minding their statue as senpai and kuhai. But Rindo evaded her grip and Alice lost her balance and she fell on Alexander's embrace. Hello there said Alexander as he hugged Alice tightly, Rindo took out her phone in light speed and took a picture very fast. Alice blushed as she parted with Alexander and looked at Rindo hatefully but all of that faded when she saw the picture Rindo took. Rindo came closer to Alice and whispered didn't I tell? All you need is get along with me and I will make sure that moments like this will keep happening. Alice looked at the picture with a slight blush, she shifted her gaze at Rindo and said, I still don't like you. We will work on that later said Rindo as she put her arms around Alice. Alexander and the others who witnessed this shook their heads girls will be girls. They thought. After that quick event, a phone ringtone came from Alexander's pocket, he picked it up and it was a message. His eyes widened at the ID of the sender, he opened the message and read it. He closed his phone and stood up excuse me, you guys keep watching while I am out for a moment. Take care Tilda, said Alice and Rindo. Alexander left the Chandra's room and headed out of the building, he picked his motorcycle and drove towards the North Star. Just what brought you here? Kinu. Chapter 67, What Now? Ladies and gentlemen, until now, we had witnessed three amazing battles between this year's top students, but we still have one more match to go, the MC girl took the stage as the lights shined on her, she was doing an amazing job for a commenter, her cute face helped to get the students' attention a lot, please everyone. Welcome my next contestants, Kiyama Akira and Arata Hisako. 
The crowd cheered as Hyama and Isako made their way to the stage with cold expression as they seemed to engage in some small talk between the two of them. This is our last battle in the first round of the autumn elections main tournament, and the theme of this battle is, Hamburger, comma, announced the MC girl. Hyama and Isako took their stations and awaited for the start. The last battle of the first round starts, now. No sooner, Hyama and Isako started making what could only be described as top-tier hamburger. In the waiting room, Alice and Rindo are locking hands, but Alice does not seem to like it all, but Rindo doesn't care either. She is using a soft shill turtle, said Takumi. He was interested in this fight. Both Hisako and Hyama seem to be up to something interesting. It can be used in many ways, but also in wrong ways too if she is not careful in cutting it, said Ryo. He had dealt with the soft shell turtle before and he may have an idea of what Hisako could be IP to. Just where the hell is Alexander? asked Alice. She tried to free her hand from Rindo but she could not. Rindo was so captivated by this year's first year and she couldn't move her eyes off the screen. I think he left the building. My brother saw him heading to the exist when he went to the bathroom. Takumi showed them his message history with Isami. Why did he leave? asked Rindo. She was having less fun without her fiancé and she doesn't like that. Work, said Alice. He did not work for weeks now. Someone from his company must have come to see him, she said as she pushed Rindo's face away from her. Now that you mentioned it, he used to disappear for a few days each time for work. He must have loads of work waiting for him. Whatever he has, that is not of our concern, said Alice. Look. Your friend is pulling some nice tricks, said Rindo. The two girls closed the topic as they both know that their fiancé's work is not all about paper, and they don't like talking about that either. Outside of Totsuki, on the road to the North Star, Alexander is driving his bike with fast speed since the road was empty but he pressed the brakes hard when he saw a grey Mustang standing in the middle of the road. He took off his helmet and walked to the car, he knocked on the window. The window rolled down and a middle-aged man with cold face was inside, he was Kinu Reefs, one of Alexander's long old friends and servants. I wonder what brought my little Reefs here to see me, out of the all the places in the world. Alexander bent down to match the window you chose the middle of this road. Good day, Alexander said Kinu with his usual indifferent tone. So, Alexander raised his eyebrow questioning Kinu. Why don't you get in? Kinu turned on his car I have a lot to say. Alexander smiled and walked to the other door and entered the car. Kinu hit the gas and they drove outside of Totsuki, leaving the poor bike alone, in the middle of the road. You know, things are a lot messier than they look said Kinu. I had a hunch about it. Alexander looked at the scenery outside as he spoke. Did you take care of it? he asked. Most of it. Alexander sighed and looked forward at the road so, what happened? What did you find? he asked. I found that the man we tried to kill four years ago is still around and he is planning his revenge. Again Kinu told his discovery to Alexander I also found that he has a connection to the local Yakuza here. Which Yakuza? The one who stole your weapons from the port, said Kinu not realizing what he has just done. He heard the sound of something cracking and looked at Alexander who had a dark look as his hair covered his eyes you didn't know. Asked Kinu, that was unexpected, that's why Alfie was desperate in requesting his help. No, no I did not. Alexander took deep breaths and calmed himself down by any chance. Is it the Atsuya family? Yes, Kinu nodded. That man was sending information about your movement and business to that Yakuza so he can take over them if he can. If he is sending information about me, then he must be very near. Alexander rubbed his eyes and looked at Kinu he must be in Japan. I expected that, said Kinu, he made a left turn and entered a tunnel, he was just driving aimlessly to calm himself too, just like Alexander he has a tendency to get angry when things are out of hand I will try to look for any clue about him soon, but more importantly, what will you do with the weapons, your men are mostly armless now, even in Japan that is not good. Don't worry about that. I can borrow the guns from Alberto's villa in Mount Fuji, I will send Vlad there tomorrow. And? asked Kinu. And regarding that man, this time, I won't let him escape, we will catch the Atsuya boy and get him to say what he has and then we find that idiot and end him forever. Alexander touched his two bullet wounds as they started to sting from pain, demanding blood from the man who caused them. Just remembering the day Alexander was shot, he feels an insane amount of rage like never before. Just you wait. You don't know why you want to kill me so much, but I know why I want to kill you. Alexander smirked as he promised his mysterious hunter with death. What now? asked Kinu as he stopped at the red light. Now, 
we kill some idiots. Chapter 68 What is the meaning of this at the mention of his name? Kiyama raised his hand in victory. He didn't dwell much on it and left the stage. No amount of words could describe Hisako's shock and disbelief. Her efforts are wasted and washed away. Her instinct kicked in looked up at the VIP section where Izarina is watching and Hisako saw Irina eyes and what she perceived as a disappointment. Irina sama Hisako whispered to herself and lowered her head in shame as she stepped out of the stage walking aimlessly like a zombie. And with this, the first round of the autumn election main tournament is over. The second round will be announced at a later time, so until then, please don't get yourself expelled, the MC girl said cutely as she too left the stage. Senziman stood up and thanked the other judges I am thankful to all of you, Tatsuki is always open for you, he said. The chibi bald man smiled and shook Senziman's hand what are you saying, I was once a student here too, things like this get me excited as I can sink in the nostalgic feeling of that past he shifted his gaze at the audience, specifically at where Natasha and Isami were standing and watching and I managed to see some old faces too he laughed. Senziman know what this man was talking about, after all, they were a senior and re junior back then. I will come around to see the second round, so you will do me a great favor to invite me to watch, said the old chibi man. But of course. Senziman exchanges one last goodbye with the judges as each one left for his work. The first round is over, the winner was decided, the losers were decided. From now on, it is a battle of the giants but only two can advance to the third and final round, who will face who? Who will lose? Who will win? But most importantly, who is the unfortunate one who will face the monster that goes by the name of Alexander? In the waiting room, Takumi stood up tiredly sight tilde he let out a long sigh and stretched his muscles. Yugi is still here? The door opened to reveal Hyama who came back from the stage. Yeah, but we are leaving soon, said Alice as she stood up. Rindo who was clinging to her all the time finally released her and dashed at Hyama hey there, that was a nice Hamburg, she said. Ah, thanks. Kiyama didn't know who this girl is so he wasn't sure how was he gonna approach her. Why don't make your cute senpai here one more? Rindo smiled cutely at Kiyama but her eyes were glowing like that if a cat in the dark. Ah, who are you? Who is she? asked Kiyama. Alice stepped forward and pulled Rindo back a little this right her sir, is none other than Kobayashi Rindo, the second seat of Tatsuki and the girl called the Red Princess of Tatsuki and, also, she is the woman that I have to tolerate for the rest of my life. Apparently. There was a huge amount of sarcasm in Alice's words as she pulled Rindo out of the room leaving everyone baffled at them. What is the second seat doing here with us? Kiyama looked at Takumi and asked after Rindo and Alice left. From what I understood, she is Alexander's second fiancé. Takumi shrugged his shoulders and picked his suitcase and decided to meet up with his brother and Natasha. Don't bother yourself with Alexander's private life. Yo stood up too and followed behind Takumi it's more complicated than you will ever imagine. Kiyama sighed and took off his blue uniform and packed his stuff and followed Takumi and Ryo while Rindo and Alice left together somewhere else. Hey, let's go somewhere else Rindo looked at Alice with pleading eyes, like a child asking to go out to play. No, Alice answered strictly sending Rindo's little hope down crashing. How about we go look for Alexander? Rindo had a sudden idea, if she dragged Alice to Alexander she can use Alexander to satisfy her burning desires. We don't know where he is said Alice, but as soon as she said that, her eyes landed on a certain group of black cars that parked shapely in the front of the ninth seat if Totsuki, Etsuya Izen. A group of men rushed in the building and after several minutes they came out dragging Izen by his arm. Alice and Rindo looked at the men with a serious expression, they stopped in their tracks and just watched. Until they spotted a familiar figure, it was Vlad, Alexander's assistant. Seeing him, Alice gathered some courage and walked to him with Rindo. Vlad she called. Vlad who heard his name looked back to see his master's two ladies walking to him together. He pushed his glasses back and smiled. Well, well, if it is not Lady Alice and Lady Rindo. What is going on here? asked Rindo. I just saw you drag us in senpai with force. Alice was the granddaughter of Senzaman, the head of the Nakari family and the director of this school, so she was concerned I demand an explanation, or else I will have to contact my grandfather. Your actions are prohibited in this school Alice took out a little device that with just one button will call upon Totsuki emergency team to this location in ten minutes. Vlad and his men who stopped to look at Alice, they stuffed his and inside the car and are now waiting for Vlad. Vlad smiled of course I will explain. 
We are simply inviting Mr. Atsuya to our company for some small talk with our boss and nothing more, but this small talk is so important that we can't delay any further as our boss is very angry now. So we had to take the necessary actions. I hope you don't mind. Of course I mind. Alice said firmly I will go with you, I want to meet Alexander. She demanded. Add me in too, said Rinda. Vlad could only sigh at this situation. In no way he can use any of his normal ways to deal with this situation, especially since the other party none other than his boss future wives. Sigh all right, Vlad looked at his men and ordered them to empty one car as Rindo and Alice got in. The cars took off to the Red Cloud HQ with Alice, Rindo, and Izan on board to meet a very pissed off Alexander. Chapter 69, A Business Meeting Lady Alice, Lady Rindo Vlad called for Rindo and Alice while driving his black car followed by his men with Izan who was kicking around struggling to free himself. I hope you understand that your actions are causing us a huge amount of problems, we can't just show up with both of you with us. He said but his smile never left his face. I don't care, I want to see where this is going, Totsuki's is my family's school and I can't let something like kidnapping a student go like this, not even for Alexander's sake. Alice was strong in her decision and won't change her mind and I am just tagging to see where this is going? It seems fun she said, she is well aware of Alexander's ways of doing things, after all, she had a long lesson from her father back then about the Helmet family. Vlad could only sigh and shake his head, the boss is already pissed enough, and his women showing up suddenly will make him angrier for sure. The cars shuffled through the streets of Tokyo as they made their way to the Red Cloud Company HQ. The cars stopped at the giant building with a big Red Cloud logo on top. The men opened the car and swarmed Izan and surrounded him so nobody can see his covered head and they don't draw suspicious gazes at them. Vlad opened the car for Rindo and Alice and followed behind his men. Alice, Rindo, and Vlad took the elevator instead of the stairs like the henchmen and went straight up to the top floor where Alexander is. Vlad guided Rindo and Alice to the only room in the top floor and knocked on the door, no one answered but he opened the door, he knows that the boss is not in the mood to answer the door. As soon as Alice and Rindo entered the room, they were greeted with the sight of a man kneeling on a nice floor as he shivers from the cold. Alice could recognize this man as Alfie, Alexander's uncle. What is going on? whispered Alice as she wondered about the cause of Alfie's actions. Rindo had the same thought but didn't say anything. What are you doing here? A deep and cold voice came from the side of the room grabbing Alice and Rindo's attention. They shifted their gaze to see Alexander sitting in his office with his legs crossed on the top of his desk, behind him stood a middle-aged man with black raven hair split in half, in front of Alexander's desk, his mother, Alexandra was sitting taking a sip from her coffee, across of her is young man with white coat, his eyes weren't exactly looking anywhere as he was fidging in his place. Alexander, Alice looked at her fiancé's dark face, his eyes are covered by his hair. I asked you a question, he said. Come on dear. Don't be harsh on the girls, they must be here to check on you Alexandra stepped in between the angry Alexander. Isn't that right girl? said Alexandra. Of course, said Rindo. Alice was stunned at first, this is her first time seeing Alexander like this, his warm personality is nowhere to be found, even if she is in front of him now, he doesn't seem to display his usual self. We will talk later, for now, said Alexandra ordered the girls to sit down on the couch. Vlad took his position behind Alexander with Kinu and stood there motionlessly. The girls did as they were told and didn't dare to retort, Alice even forgot what she came here for. Hello. The young man stood up as he said with monotone voice I am, Dr. Dotchwan Murphy. Nice to meet you. He said with his body bowing a little repeatedly. The girl returns his greeting and that was it, Alexander continued to sit while crossing his feet on the desk. After a few minutes. The door was opened with Vlad's henchman entering with a tied up Izan who was screaming stuff like where is this? Who are you? Why are you doing this? But his words fell on deaf ears. He was seated in the middle of the room, Alexander gestured for them to remove his blindfolds. Gah! What the hell? Fear is visible in his own eyes as he tried to adjust to the light, he looked around and saw he was surrounded by a bunch of men, his eyes landed on Alexander, Rindo, and Alice. Nothing can describe his shock. W.H., what is going on? he asked, he looked at Rindo and didn't even dare to look at Alexander. Rindo just shrugged her shoulders. You should look here, said Alexander, his voice was as cold as ice. Izan trembled a little as he shifted his eyes to Alexander, he felt fear when he saw his golden eyes glowing from under his hair. What do, you want from me? he asked slowly is this about the tournament? he said. 
I don't care about your little tricks back there. I brought you here to discuss about your sweet to big brother. Zen felt his heart sink, he knew that a day like this will come. Don't bother, he doesn't care about me, if you're trying to use me as a hostage, then just forget it, he will rather kill me than agreeing to whatever you say Zen's eyes went hollow for a moment as he recalled what kind of man his brother is. You're not a hostage, said Alexander and I don't take hostages. Zen felt shocked at his words but he didn't speak. What I brought you here for is very simple. Alexander stood up from his desk and walked forward. Everyone else kept their eyes on him, from Izan to Rindo, Alice, and Alexandra, well, the last one was just playing with Rindo's red hair. I want you to arrange a business meeting with your brother, said Alexander. Chapter 70, Deal. What are you, talking about? Izan looked in disbelief at Alexander who stood tall in front of him. As you heard, I want you to arrange for me a business meeting between me and your brother, said Alexander, he looked at Vlad and signaled for him. Vlad brought out a document and handed it to Alexander. Untie him, Alexander ordered, his henchmen wasted no time as they removed the released Izan's hands. Alexander gave the now free Izan the document. Izan looked at the document suspiciously before he took reluctantly, after all, his current situation can only allow him to go with the flow. This a business document for a deal of buying liquor from your brother and possibly a long-term relationship, Alexander said as Izan looked at the document. And why do you need me? Why don't you just go and meet him personally, said Izan, his fear went away a little as he could recognize that Alexander meant him no harm. To be honest with you, my objective is not the deal, but the meeting, Alexander said as he returned to his seat. The tension in the room returned to normal as Alexander's anger went down quite a bit. And why should I help you, asked Izan. Alexander raised his eyebrow and looked at Izan as if he was a retard as this situation give the impression that I am for help, he said. Young boy. You better do we say, or the lightest punishment you'll receive will be like him Alexandra pointed at her brother behind them. Izan looked back to see the freezing Alfie who was trembling. Just her as he say. From kneeling too much on the ice, Alfie could barely speak a full sentence. This time, the white-coated man stood up straight and looked at the wall any longer and Mr. Dot Alfie will lose feeling in his legs, he said. Alexander looked at his uncle and sighed help him he said to his mother. Alexandra walked to her brother and brought a towel here, come with me she helped him stand and walk slowly as he can barely walk. I will go help, any wrong things can cause serious problems, said Dr. Dot Juan Murphy. Alexander didn't mind and let him go, after all, that man is his uncle. So, will you do as we say or we? Fine, I will help but on one condition, said Izan, he didn't fully understand why Alexander wants the meeting but if he is thinking is right, he would be more than happy to help. I'm listening. Alexander said. Are you and my brother in war? He asked. Alexander raised his eyebrow and nodded he caused some loses and I am not happy about them, and even more, he attacked a base of operations in Kyoto last week, but don't worry, we won't kill, I will just go there and ask him politely to stop his actions. Of course, that wasn't Alexander's intention, no way in hell would he let someone step on his family name and he will just let he keep living, killing to Wigatu is the easiest choice but there are far more things he to do to him. I am not a fool, said Azen firmly I know how things run around, big brother won't be alive if he ended up losing. Alexander stayed silent waiting for Azen to continue. The reason why I asked wasn't so I can plea for his life, said Azen. Then for what? asked Alexander. I was asking so I can request for his death. Izan looked very serious as his words surprised the gang, even Rindo and Alice felt that something was wrong with the brother's relationship. I will only help you if you can promise me that, said Izan with absolute disdain in his voice. Who? Alexander looked at Izan with interest, this is something you don't see every day, he thought then, I promise you, in the name of the Red Blinders Alexander Helmet promises the death at Suyadwigata. Alexander smiled sweetly contrary to what is coming out of his mouth. Alexander reached for Izan's hand and shook signaling that the two now has an agreement. Izan was having the time of his life, with this, his freedom isn't unreachable, all he needs is to get them together in one single room and he can wait out the war to end. He did some research in his spare time about the Helmet family after his small conversation with Nakari Arena, all he needed was small lead and the rest came out naturally. The Red Blinders wasn't a group that cared about hiding their traces, in the records, you can find the Red Blinders involved in every major turning point in history. And they are classified as the most powerful mafia in the world. 
to Wagata, I don't know what had gotten into you to pick a losing fight like this. Your death is just around the corner as in thought and didn't bother to hide the giant smirk on his face. Chapter 71 Let me tell you what is going to happen having decided their course of action. Izan left the Red Cloud HQ to carry on his duties and try to get a meeting with Twigata for Alexander. Having calmed down, Alexander turned to look at his girls. Ladies, welcome to my humble home, he said with a bright smile. Vlad and Kini left the room to let the boss have some privacy with his girls, and also to check on Alfie, the man had suffered too much cold. In the room, Alexander was getting lectured by Alice about his actions in Totsuki previously and how she won't allow it to happen a second time. Alexander could only shut up and let her frustration out. Rindo was munching on some candy she found on Alexander's office and totally ignored the scene of Alexander being lectured by Alice. Oh yeah, Rindo, your father gave you a set of keys for the villa before he left, right? Alexander asked. Yeah, he did, he left one for me and one for the chief of the workers back at the villa. Rindo looked at Alexander as she pulled the keys from her pocket. You need them? She asked. Yeah. Without any hesitation, Rindo threw the keys to Alexander, he grabbed them and put them in his pocket. He then shifted his gaze at the confused Alice and pulled her down making her sit on his lap. How many dates did we have? He asked in hope of distracting Alice. And it worked like a charm as Alice blushed one, just one, it when I, confessed she said cutely. Then, should we go to another one? said Alexander as he kissed Alice, she returned his affection with her tongue. Rindo looked back to see the two in a deep kiss, she could only shake her head and return to her food. After separating from their kiss for air, Alexander looked at Rindo who was busy with her food, he looked at Alice and hinted for her. What about you Rindo? said Alexander do you want to come too? he asked. Rindo looked back in surprise what? I asked you if you want to go on a date together? The three of us, said Alexander. Nah, I don't want to disturb both of you. Rindo laughed as she ate more. You should come too, said Alice with a frown although I don't like you, you're still Alexander's fiancé, just like me, and I don't to be the evil first wife. Rindo froze in her place, not knowing what she can say. Alexander took Alice off his lap and stood up I have things to do after I am done with a meeting, we should go in a date, it will be fun. He winked at Rindo as he left. He intends to let the girls sort out their relationship. What he wants is not the girls loving each other. If they can live with each other peacefully without hatred going in between, that alone is enough for Alexander to be satisfied. After one day, Alexander received a call from Izan saying that he was able to arrange for a meeting between the two. The meeting will take place today at 8 p.m. Alexander prepared himself and grabbed a few documents. He called for Kinu to come to his office. You called, said Kinu as he entered quietly finding Alexander organizing his papers. Yeah, the meeting will be held in 10 hours from now. He raised his eyes and continued clean his place from anything, if he has a gun hidden, empty the bullets, if he has a knife, switch it with a dull one, you know what you do. Kinu didn't answer and just left the room, his mission is his top priority now. Alexander sat down on his chair and called for Vlad. Send this to the Etsuya company, Alexander ordered Vlad who took the documents from the table and left to do his duty. Alexander waited for the time to pass, he did some paperwork, played with his two fiancés as they came to visit him visited his uncle who was healing up his cold legs under the care of Dr. Dot Murphy. And then the time comes and Alexander departed. He met with Kinu who had already finished his mission and followed Alexander for am extra protection. Alexander's car entered the Atsuya company's garage. Kinu immediately disappeared as Alexander met with a man in a suit who guided him to the elevator. Mr. Dot Wigato is waiting for you, said the man as he knocked on the large door. Once the door was opened, Wigata stood up from his chair and walked to the middle of his office. Mr. Twigata, this is Mr. Dot Krutz, from Berlin. The man introduced Alexander as he retreated outside leaving the two alone. Krutz from Berlin, thought Alexander, that was the fake ideas and presented him with to his brother. I heard you want to do business. Wigata's voice was low and harsh as he talked. It's good to see you too. Alexander walked slowly to the round meeting table and sat on one of the two head chairs. You just came from Berlin? asked Twigata. His eyes were like a hawk scanning each move of Alexander as he walked to the other head chair of the table. What do you know about Berlin? asked Alexander. Twigata didn't answer as he clearly had no idea I heard you are German. Alexander looked at Twigata slightly. All this fake ID thing is not his thing, so he decided to not play along any more well. 
I came here from Berlin, but that does not mean I am German. A light chuckle escapes Alexander's mouth as he continued guess where I am from? He asked. Wigata took out a cigarette and lighted it on okay, in Kyoto, I met several men, they were Russian mobs. They sound like you. The room was quiet and cold, every step the men took it could be heard clearly, even when they move, the sound of their clothes rubbing against could be heard. Alexander frowned slightly by not to the extent where Wigata could pick it up. And? He asked quietly. You came in a car, a very young man, your clothes are clean, your suit is not branded. Said Wigata where did you get your suit made? He asked. My grandmother, back home. She likes to make things. Alexander touched the fabric of his black suit when I wear this, I can feel like my entire family is with me, I feel their love and protection. Alexander shifted his gaze to Wigata where did you get yours made? He asked. Wigata sneered quietly, he looked at the window and pointed at one of the buildings below from that store, it is very close and, very luxurious too. Mr. Dot Helmet. Alexander didn't seem to be fazed by the fact that the man knew about his identity, after all, this much is expected from the man who dared to attack his men. Dot Alexander's smile started growing slowly as he began to chuckle I am surprised at how easy it was to get into the room with you, he said. Wigart reached behind him and pulled out a gun, he pointed at Alexander with a smile and now? He asked mockingly. Alexander smiled and raised his arms slowly and now I should tell you that during the time you were sweating while waiting for my arrival. I sent someone here. He made a gun with his hand and pointed at Wigata he found you gun, and unloaded it. Those words hit Wigata very hard as he checked his gun which was already empty and useless now. Wigata looked at Alexander who took out several bullets from his inside pocket. Wigata looked at Alexander and clenched his hands. Alexander took one bullet and placed it on the table. Bam. Masaki Sakurai. Bam another bullet. Tashiki Sheshi. Bam another one was placed beside them. Araragi Junbi. Alexander was naming Twigata's top officers, each name made Twigata feel like he was naked in front of Alexander. Bam. Sasumi Akano. Alexander took one last bullet and looked at it carefully. Bam he placed it gently as if afraid that it will break. And finally, Etsuya Twigata. He smiled as he saw Twigata's face turn a little red from anger and shame. Alexander stood up slowly none of you will survive. He made his goal very clear for Wigata your level of security is pitiful, while we are a giant organization, the men you took out in Kyoto are just the tip of the iceberg. Alexander was not joking, the Red Blinders are far strong, their forces are equal to a national army. Alexander looked at the pale Wigata I could have killed you when I walked through the door, or let him kill you when he came to your office. Alexander pointed behind to Wigata. Wigata looked behind him slowly as he saw a man coming out of secret chamber he had built himself. It was designed to be his escape route. Kinu found this room and used it to come and leave this building easily. No words can describe the fear Wigatu is experiencing now. Instead of killing you while you are unaware. Alexander stepped forward and came closer to Wigata but I wanted you to know, I wanted you to know who you are dealing with, who you are thinking you're playing with, I want you to see everything you worked for fall apart in front of you. Alexander sneered at the man in front of him, looks like his plans were just a joke after all three days. Alexander said to Wigata that is the time until you will die, I am going to tell you what is going to happen to you, so let me see if you can change your fate. Alexander turned towards the door and walked slowly, Kinu followed him and opened the door the first day, all of your business will fall apart, your company will have not a single partner anymore, the second day, all of your operation bases will be destroyed, the third day, my men will attack this place and kill anything that moves and you will be the last person to witness that. Before he leaves and closes the door, Alexander looked at Twigata for one last moment. Just like the others, you will know why we are called the Red Blinders. Chapter 72, Unexpected Opponent. Being done with his meeting with Twigata, Alexander returned to his company. There he ordered Vlad, Alfie, and Kino to carry on the three days mission. By the time Alexander met with Twigata, his plan was already in motion. The Etsuya family's legal business relationships are being destroyed by the second. As for the underground ones, just the word that the Red Blinders are after the Etsuya family made all the smart bosses retreat kindly and dare not to offend the big beasts of this world. While the underworld is moving based on his orders, Alexander was actually enjoying himself in a date with Rindo and Alice, and he had to admit, having two beautiful girls on each side felt great, no man can deny that.
but apparently, Rindo is the one who is having the most fun, after all, the date is going according to her whims and desires. On another hand, we have the man who wasn't enjoying himself that much. Tawagata felt the impact of losing his relationships as his phone never stopped ringing from all of his partners suggesting to terminate their contracts. Tawagata felt like his body is burning as he was alone in his office, his head replayed the scene of him and Alexander earlier. He picked up his phone and dialed a number, he raised his phone to his ear as his heart started pounding from anticipation, if his call was not answered, he may really lose everything. And finally, the call was answered hello? He called. What is it? A cold and distant voice came from the other side of the phone, Tawagata can swear he could see the annoyed expression of the other man on the other side of the phone. Harusama, it's me, Tawagata. Tawagata's voice had a tone of helplessness to it as he continued I am in trouble, the red blinders are after me, he said. Impossible. The other person called Haru said there were no big flaws in the plan, they should have not noticed your actions if you follow my commands. Haru said his assumption as he thought in what could be the reason. He can't afford to lose Tawagata right now, he still needs him in Japan. Tawagata did not answer and just stayed silent. What is wrong? Why are you not speaking? Asked Haru. Displeasure was apparent in his cold voice, after a second, it finally dawned on his you did not follow my orders exactly. Did you? Tell me what you did, Haru ordered to Agata who could only sigh and confess his actions if he wants to get out of this. And just like that, Tawagata confessed his actions in the previous weeks. You idiot, said Haru, no amount of words can describe how much disappointment he is feeling right now. Sir, I before Tawagata could finish, Haru cut him off quickly. I made it very clear, didn't I? He said. He wished he could meet Tawagata at the moment and strangle him slowly until he dies. The red blinders are a giant force, they are arrogant and very prideful. I told you to take small steps when dealing with them, didn't I? But, sir, I found the chance to get more resources from them, so I took it, said Tawagata. After all, it was only one mission. The attack on the Kyoto branch could be justified as a misunderstanding and we could wipe all suspicions with that, fights between different gangs is very common in Japan, just as we planned. Ha ha ha. Haru could only laugh at the idiot's words in the end, you were consumed with greed too, you found the Kyoto base full of money so you decided to take everything, you found the shipment full of weapons so you decided to take them all again. Haru listened with his forehead full of sweat. I made it very clear, when entering a dragon's den. You don't just burst in like it's your home, you take it slow as a snail and you blend with the background and never stand out, so the dragon ignores you while you advance closer to his weak spot, and then you strike at the perfect moment said Haru, he knows who he is dealing with, but Tawagata didn't seem to comprehend the true might of the red blinders. I told you to attack the Kyoto base without killing anyone and then apologize, go to the port, take a few weapons to supply your men, the red blinders never count their weapons, but you took the whole shipment. You basically raised a sign saying I want you to kill me what more ridiculous is that you actually agrees to have a one on one meeting with their boss as if he is some pathetic hotel owner, I am amazed that you're still alive after that. Haru could not stop himself from nagging to Igata like an old man, he was very frustrated. Sir. What should we do now? asked to Igata. Haru went silent on the phone before he spoke again what do you mean by we? he said. To Igata's heart sank as his fears came true. The line was cut off and Tawagata was swimming in his sweat. You must be kidding. Tawagata's baker abandoned him, and now he is all alone. A small Yakuza boss against an organization that was present since who knows when. There was no hope of survival, isn't it? The next day at 1 a.m., in the middle of the night. As Alexander promised, after getting Roberto's hidden weapons, Vlad, Kinu, and Alfie attacked every base that has any relationship with the Etsuya family. The Red Blinders spent more effort in hiding the dead bodies than destroying the bases. While this was happening, Alexandra returned to Totsuki, the second round of the autumn election was announced a day ago. Alexander still doesn't know who is his opponent is or what theme will his match have. He met with his friends at the usual waiting room. Good grief, I can't believe you, you didn't even show up to witness the theme announcement for your match. Takumi was very angry at the irresponsible action of Alexander. Relax dude, it doesn't matter what theme it will be, or who my opponent is, I will win as usual Alexander shrugged his shoulders. That overconfident is the part I hate the most about you, said Takumi. Takumi scolding Alexander for being late was a scene to witness for the others like Alice, Rindo who came here anyway, Kiyama and Ryu and even Isami. 
The door was knocked and one staff member told Alexander to prepare himself as his match will begin right now. Looks like I gotta go. Alexander escaped the room leaving an angry Takumi who was still in the middle of his ranting. Dashing to the Chandra's room, Alexander could hear the MC girl hyping up the audience. From the right corner, we have the man who broke the record, the Black Prince of Tatsuki himself, Sabu Alexander. Alexander almost tripped at the mention of the Black Prince nickname I forgot that I had such nickname. He thought. He quickly made his way to the stage and waved a little at the audience. And from the left corner, we have the abnormal student, someone who was deemed to lose against a giant, but he manages to prevail. Alexander tilted his head in confusion who the hell is she talking about? He thought. His answer shortly followed, from the polar star, Yuka Hiroshima. Alexander looked at the other side of the stage and saw his brother coming up with big smile devoid of any type of anxiety when he faced him. Yo, Aniki, said Suma. Alexander smiled at his brother how unlucky, he said. Chapter 73, the generations of the judges standing in front of Alexander is none other than his own stepbrother Soma, Alexander chuckled and shook his head. To think that I will be facing you of all people. Alexander has anticipated that maybe his opponent will be Hyama or the other purple-haired secretary girl, he didn't count Alice, because if she was his opponent, she would have told him earlier before the fight. I should have known. He thought. I see that you're pretty surprised, said Soma. He put his tools on his station and walked to Alexander. Yeah. Alexander was preparing his tools too. The MC girl was still talking to the crowd. This battle is one of the most exciting battles in the autumn election, the two men before us are actually half-brothers. What we are witnessing is a battle between brother to see who is the strongest chef. What the hell is she talking about? said Alexander as he looked at the girl behind him. Who knows, they suddenly started calling this a battle of brothers. Soma shrugged his shoulders and put his hands in his pants pockets. In this battle, we will explore alongside these two young chefs a whole new world of flavors, Siba with his dominant flavor and Yukahira with his flavor of trickery. Ha ha ha, nice, said Alexander as he found what the girl is saying very appealing. Flavor of trickery, huh? Soma smiled at his title. The theme for this battle will be, at the mention of the theme, Alexander's ears turned to that of an elephant as he focused everything the MC girl, rice, comma the MC girl shouted as hard as she can, the crowd screamed following her, after all, rice is a main ingredient in every Japanese home, one can even go further and say that rice is the main food of the Japanese cuisine. So that was the theme, huh? Alexander smiled if it's about rice, then he has more than one recipe in his arsenal, even he himself doesn't know how much recipes he has. Well, good luck Aniki. Soma waved at his brother and returned to his station, Soma switched to his serious mode and focused on calming himself and concentrate, Alexander isn't an easy target to beat. And that was proven when he talked with Takumi after their battle, Takumi made it clear that Alexander is very powerful, any mistake and weakness can cost a lot in front of him. Soma believes that as long as he doesn't make any mistake and make the best rice dish he can, he won't lose to Alexander. By what Soma didn't know was that Alexander doesn't need him to make mistakes to destroy him, all he needs is the time to cook. The constants are here, the theme was revealed, but, where are the judges? The MC girl said, the crowd looked at judges area and found it empty. What? Dude, where are the judges? Are they late? Did something happen to them? Words like that were thrown randomly among the crowd. <laughs> Alexander didn't understand why the judges are not here yet, Totsuki wouldn't call people who are irresponsible like that. But he didn't put too much focus on that matter and returned to thinking about what kind of rice he should use. And what kind of dish he should make. The crowd was still wondering and nearly thought that the match would be cancelled. But all of their worries were answered when the lights were shifted and focused on one gate. Everyone, look in that direction, the MC girl said, the judges are about to make their entrance. All of this was planned beforehand and the judges were meant as a surprise for both the crowd and the constants. The gate opened and from there, five people walked out. One muscular man in a suit took the lead, the MC girl handed her mic over to him and left. For the semi-finals, we will be the judges, this man is none other than Dujima Jin, the first seat of the 69th generation. The crowd went wild as they had can see people who they can only dream of meeting and being in the same room with. Behind Dujima stood, the 80th generation second seat, Inui Hingo herself. Her face had a gentle smile as her eyes searched for a certain cute girl. Beside her, 
The 79th generation second seat Ms. Yuhara Fuayumi, her cold purple eyes didn't show any emotions and only looked in a daze at the stage. To the left of Dujima, the 88th generation's second seat, Snozaki Taki, a woman of hot temperature and angry behavior but her skills are without a doubt top tier. And right next to her, a man who was called the magician, with his pink hair and an undercut, his most iconic feature, his clear glasses. This man is the 79th generation's first seat, Shinomiya Kujiro. Alexander saw people shouting the names, he was tempted and looked at the judges, as soon as his eyes met Kujiro's, he smiled and shouted Kui. Kujiro was shocked and looked at Alexander who was waving at him. What is wrong with that punk? Tsunozaki frowned at Alexander's behavior Shinomiya Senpai, do you know him? She asked as the boy seems to be calling for him. Kujiro looked the other way and said no. Never seen him before. Inui and Dujima chuckled at that, but Dujima had to cut the fun time as they don't have forever, the match has to begin. Not wasting any time Dujima shouted, the first match of the second round of the autumn elections main tournament, Yukahira Soma vs Seibu Alexander, begin. The crowd screamed on top of their lungs, things are getting more interesting with each second. Back to the stage, Yukahira Soma had already started cooking, while Alexander was sitting on his chair still thinking about what to do. What should I cook, should I make garlic butter rice? Or maybe rice and bean enchiladas? Nah, that's too cheap. After taking a minute of his time, Alexander finally jumped off his chair and stretched his muscles then let's make that one then. He said as he took out his knife with a smug face. Chapter 74, Shivers Alexander looked at his station for his ingredients, since he was not here to hear about the theme, Totsuki's staff must at least provide him with the basic ingredients so he can make a dish in accordance with the theme. And he was right. When he opened his station storage, he found his ingredients, he looked through them and checked if he still needs anything else. Most of his ingredients are there but the most important one and a variant of the theme of this battle is not there, brown rice. Alexander put his ingredients on his station, he turned to Dujima who was acting as the person in charge of being the MC and the one keeping things in order. Excuse me, Dujima, can I go to the storage of the ingredients? said Alexander. Dujima didn't expect this to come from Alexander, but he didn't think too much of it yes, you can, please return fast. He called for one of the staff and instructed him to escort Alexander to the storage. While Alexander is leaving, the other four judges had their eyes on him. What's wrong with that punk? Did he forget something or what? Tsunozaki Taki looked at Alexander with an annoyed expression I hate this type of chefs the most. She said with her eyes shooting venom at Alexander. Inui tilted her head in confusion what type? She said while stretching her words. The unprepared ones, they always bring disasters behind them in the kitchen. Taki had a bad experience with people like that, so, seeing Alexander behaving the same way made her feel even angrier than before. We are not here to express our opinions about them. Kujiro said suddenly they don't work for us, as long as they deliver their dish, that is enough for us, Tsunozaki. Kujiro gave his coup high a cold glare, stop screaming in my ear and sit down, Kujiro ordered. Tsunozaki felt a shiver run down her spine, she was about to talk back but she was grabbed by Ms. Yuhara by her shoulder. Just, sit down, Ms. Yuhara said calmly. Ms. Yuhara senpai. Tsunozaki looked at her senpai and then shifted her gaze at Kujiro, she then gritted her teeth and sat down reluctantly. Oh, here he comes said Inui as she pointed at the door where Alexander was coming back with a small bag filled with brown rice. Sorry for the inconvenient, Dujima. Alexander laughed a little as he passed by Dujima. Don't mind it, it is your right, said Dujima. Alexander put down the bag and started cooking. As soon as he grabbed the cooking tools, his aura changed and everyone could feel it. And Soma wasn't an exception, he felt like there is a knife held in his throat. He shivered in fear and slowly turned back. But what he saw was only Alexander stirring butter and shallot in a large saucepan peacefully. Was it my imagination? Soma thought. Alexander noticed his nervous eyes and asked what is wrong? Nah, nothing. I was just checking on you since you left the stage earlier, Soma said as he shook that expression off. Alexander smiled I just went to grab some brown rice, he said. You're using brown rice? I am using white rice in here Soma told his brother about what he is using as ingredients. Alexander raised his eyebrow and smiled more are you perhaps making a garlic's butter rice? he asked. You can tell? Soma laughed casually not minding even one bit that his dish was exposed, that doesn't matter, after all, 
Alexander seems to be making something entirely different than him. I am making a lemon brown rice with garlic and thyme, so we will see who has the better dish, do your best. Alexander said the last part with all honesty as he added his rice to the pan, after all, Soma will really need that luck. Alexander was not holding back at all, well, he was actually. But he was using his flavor extraction skill, every ingredient he used in his dish was exposed to his golden hands thus making use of each of the ingredients maximum flavor. Alexander added the stock, salt, and pepper. He covered it and let it simmer over low heat until the broth is absorbed and the rice became tender. That went for about 45 minutes. In the meantime, Alexander didn't sit idle. In a skillet, he heated the oil, garlic, thyme, and chili flakes over moderately low heat. Cooked it until the garlic is just beginning to brown, for about three minutes. Alexander shifted his gaze and relaxed a little as most of the work is done. He looked at his brother and tried to see what he is up to. Until now, the judges never moved their eyes from Alexander, there is something about that sudden change of aura that made them feel awe and respect, even the hot-blooded Snozaki and Kujiro. For Kujiro, he felt this aura before when he battled Alexander, but he was too arrogant to even feel it in this way. Now that he cooled down and felt it in a neutral light, he definitely has to admit, there is a mysterious feeling to the way Alexander cooks. No sooner, Alexander added lemon zest and juice seasoned the garlic with salt and pepper and then tossed it with cooked rice. He raised his hands signaling he had finished making his dish. Our first server will be Sabu Alexander, may the judges step into the arena and take their seats. Dujima called for his fellow judges as they came down from their high chairs where they could observe the stage clearly. Dujima and the others took their seats as Alexander served them a tightly closed pot each. Kujiro, Dujima, Inui, Tsunozaki, and Mizuhara could smell the faint breathtaking aroma from the close the pot. They could not contain a hungry expression to appear on their face. Alexander smiled and reached for the five pots and opened them to let the hungry judges see the wonderlands. Chapter 75 A trickster and a conquer Kujiro looked at the pot in front of him. He could smell a breathtaking aroma coming from it. He shifted his gaze at Alexander as the latter reached for the pot and opened it making Kujiro and the other judges to visit the Wonderlands. What an amazing aroma. Inui felt like she is in the vast fields of rice. And she felt this without even tasting, just from the aroma alone. Indeed, Mizuhara closed her eyes to savor the smell even more, even the hot-blooded Snozaki calmed down and melted in the feeling. Dujima was the first one to reach for a spoon and take a bite, in that instant he felt like he was rice farmer that sat with his family around a table for lunch, surprisingly, his little family is his fellow judge, they surrounded the big man and started eating his hard work result which is the delicious brown rice. A sense of satisfaction ran in Dujima's soul with each bite the kids took, he sighed in relief as if his tiredness from today is all gone and replaced with fresh new energy to continue his day. The crowd saw the satisfied expression on the judges' faces and wished they were in their place. They smelled the previous wave of the aroma and they could barely contain themselves from beginning for a taste. The strong aroma circled around in the arena, it affected everyone, and of course, Soma wasn't an exception. When he felt it, he felt a little nervous but didn't lose hope, he is very confident in his abilities and his own dish. Alexander smiled at the result of his work and walked back to his station, his eyes met with Soma's for a moment try to top that if you can Alexander challenge his brother casually with a full confidant. Ha ha, just you wait, Soma said. Kujiro put down his spoon and reflected on the taste it felt like this dish is a portal to another dimension where you can savor the flavor to the max. Kujiro smiled as he became sure, his previous defeat against Alexander wasn't luck or because he underestimated him. Alexander was far stronger than Kujiro clearly back then, and even now. Soma was about to finish his dish, he took a deep breath and organized his plate, this is the deciding moment, and he needs to make the most of it. Soma grabbed his plates and walked to the judges area and placed a barrel for each one of the five judges. Soma grinned widely as the camera focused on him this the Yukahira style. Garlic butter fried rice, please enjoy it. Kujiro looked at his dish to smell a great aroma coming from it, he could see the golden pieces of rice standing out. This is, Dujima was the one to question that, for the garlic butter rice dish, the color is a little odd. Soma smiled and said, that is because I fried the rice with the garlic slices on low heat. Kujiro frowned slightly at that, he wanted to speak but he shut up, but Snozaki spoke what was on his mind you brat. That is not how you make garlic butter rice. It can't be called garlic butter rice anymore more like, fried rice with garlic butter, she said with all seriousness. 
Soma didn't seem to be affected at all. His smirk only became wider as he retorted the main point is not how I made the dish. In the end, this round is about rice, and my dish is using rice as the main ingredient. Now if you're willing, have a taste, Sa said. Who the hell do I before Tsunozaki could finish her words, Dujima, Kujiro, Inui, and Mizuhara took a bite after Soma finished talking. A wave of pleasure assaulted their tasting buds, they felt like their bodies are being carried by a wave of golden rice. This taste. Inui could feel something sneaky in the dish she is eating. I can feel it too. Dujima took another bite to confirm his suspicions. Me too, this taste. I know it very well. Kujiro is dying to recognize the taste. Mizuhara and Tsunozaki are racking their brains for that, but all came negative. After a period of non-stop tasting, Kujiro was the one to realize what that familiar taste is. It came to him in his world of flavors. Out of the sea of the golden rice, a creature shot out and jumped in front of Kujiro. What he saw was a giant chicken swimming across the vast ocean of rice. Chicken? He shouted, soon after him, Dujima and Inui realized it too, followed with Mizuhara and Tsunozaki. But how? Tsunozaki searched her bowel and found not a single trace of any chicken in it. Indeed, there is no chicken in this dish, Dujima smiled as he finished his dish. I think you owe us an explanation, Mr. Yukahira Kujiro smiled, his eyes looked at Soma who had a proud expression on his face. Hurry the hell up kid, shouted Snozaki, the only thing that stopped her from hitting Soma on the head is her previous talk with Kujiro. The reason is, Soma pulled out a bag from his pocket and showed it to the judges. Inui tilted her head is that a, chicken flavor powder? She said, her words stirred up the arena. The hell did he use that for? A student questioned. I don't know man, this my first time seeing such a thing, answered another. Kujiro and Dujima looked down at a bit of the dish that was left. Kujiro rolled a single piece and focused on it. Did you mix it with the white rice? He asked. That will explain the odd color at the white rice. Dujima said with wide eyes, this is a first for him too. But, how could he do that? Tsunozaki felt her head spinning. Every kid she underestimated turned out to be a genius who could put any chef she has known to shame. Soma laughed and raised his chest that is because it is our style, the Yukihira style. He pointed his family restaurant name on his shirt. What do you think brother? Sharma turned to look at Alexander who was still sitting on his chair but his eyes were just as wide as everyone else. Ha ha ha. He suddenly started laughing you are really amazing, Soma. Alexander felt really good, he has seen something new by his own half-brother, for the first time in his life he was surprised when someone pulled a trick in cooking. Isn't that right? Ha ha ha. Soma let himself be praised as he joined his brother in laughing too. In the waiting room, Alice, Takumi, Rindo, Ryo, Isami, and Hyama who are watching the battle also felt amazed. That is very creative, said Rindo, she really wanted to eat that dish now, maybe she will go and have Sama cook for her. Ha! Huh. I guess Takumi didn't lose to some weakling after all. Be glad. Alice said to Takumi with a smug face. Beat it, vampire. Takumi didn't like to talk about his loss on Soma's hand don't throw salt on my wound, I will get my revenge later, he said. Look, Chef Dujima took the stage, said Hyama. Um, Dujima took the mick and cleared his throat. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I think it is time to announce the winner. Both students delivered their dish and I think the judges had already made their decision. The crowd cheered for the judges as they can't wait to hear who the winner is. Dujima, Kujiro, Inui, Mizuhara, Tsunozaki, each one took a sign and wrote the winner's name that they believe deserves to win. Now, will the dominator and the conqueror of the flavor lands win? Or will the victory be with a trickery master?